One, two, three, four, testing. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, testing. Okay, okay. Hi, I'll the stage come. I'll the stage. Ahin. One, two, one, two. Bounce a little bit ahead, bad. One, two, one, two. One, two, three, four, testing. One, two, one, two. Okay. One, two, one, two. One, two. Hello. Tamam. Okay. Mashi. Okay. for the camera we have three minutes in three minutes we go yeah okay I you you, you know but uh, me speak you Jubran you know Jubran you uh, tell me huh? okay we're gonna find out
Welcome to the beautiful kingdom of Bahrain, where for the first time in 2021, 15 of the world's strongest men have come together to battle it out in a contest that over three hours and five events will test every facet of their strength, power and conditioning. This is World's Ultimate Strongman Strength Island. I'm Andy Shepard, great to be with you and I'm very pleased to be joined by a man who knows exactly what it's like to compete at World's Ultimate Strongman. Two time Britain's strongest man, Big Loz, Lauren Charlene. Look, Loz, this is a non-stop back-to-back -back competition and these five events are really going to test our strongmen to the absolute limit. This is going to be an absolutely brutal day. We've got five events, as you just said, starting with the Axel Deathlift, they're calling it, up to 440 kilos just to get them warmed up, moving on to the mystery event, which is the arm over arm flag hoist. Then we've got the dumbbell, the medley, and finally we're going to finish off on the famous 10 stone Atlas run, which finishes with 200 kilos. We're going to be tested in the time they've got to do this competition, three hours. That's never been done before. These guys are under all sorts of pressure. I'm excited for it. I'm so excited, and I can tell you what, the temperature here is rising, and it's only going to get hotter. But before we meet our 15 strongmen, let's learn a little bit more about our incredible host country. The archipelago of Bahrain was the birthplace of the ancient kingdom of Dilmun, referred to as a paradise in the Epic of Gilgamesh. A fabled Garden of Eden filled with verdant groves of date trees praised by the world's oldest poetic saga. Visitors to the kingdom in the modern times can experience luxury hotels and resorts, cultural heritage sites, and ancient history, all situated on an island only 51 kilometers long and 18 kilometers wide. It's no surprise, then, that Bahrain's city of Manama has been made capital for Arab tourism and awarded world's best wedding destination. A hub for trade and commerce since the dawn of civilization, Bahrain is now a center for cloud computing and e-commerce. Manama has even been named the most financially attractive city in the world. And while Bahrain is rightfully proud of its heritage, it hasn't stopped working towards a better future, pioneering e-government, promoting science and mathematics through education, and tackling inequality. Sport continues to thrive with everything from soccer to Formula One growing in popularity. Under the patronage of His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, MMA has rapidly developed in Bahrain and beyond with the promotion of the Brave Combat Federation, supporting MMA globally. Now Bahrain is hosting Strength Island with a week-long festival of strength, featuring powerlifting, weightlifting, and GCC Strongest Man, all culminating in an event worthy of its own epic tale as mighty heroes battle it out for the title of World's Ultimate Strongman. First big show of the year, so obviously they all want to kind of lay the, the you know the, the, the path for the rest of the year. There's some big shows they'll be looking to compete in, and you've got 15 of the absolute best guys on the planet here to compete today. Our strong men making their way onto the stage. As I said, all of these competitors are great friends. But today at all business, Ivar Smok Stellis, as you say, still improving. Nearly six foot six of them, and then the legend, Lars. Misha. Misha is just, you know, one of the, the best characters in the sport. A man that's going to give 110% always. And I think the fact that he's not competed for a while is going to be good for him. He's coming in healthy, in shape. I'm interested to see how he does today. At 40 years of age, he's still lifting huge weights. Got Ramin Fajan out there, there's um, Rauner Heinler. It's not Bobby Thompson, but Rauner there. I think that's Adam Bishop. Big Bish. There's Ethor from Iceland. There we go. Mohammed Estepor, the new Iranian. He's one of the few athletes I don't know too much about, but I know the Iranians always send good athletes. Rauner Heinler, 
the world record holder in the 400 kilo deadlift for reps. Someone to look out for in that first event and another man to look out for in the first event, Adam Bishop there. Will be looking to make a mark here today, as will Ramin Farshaned. Ramin is a very, very good deadlifter. He performed extremely well in the last feats of uh, the World Ultimate Strongman contest. And how about this man, Alexei Novikov, last year's strongest man in the world. He'll be looking to start 2021 20, in six. JF Karan, another absolute legend of the sport. And I'm excited to see the return of Konstantin Janasha. This man is talked about as one of the best deadlifters in the world, unfortunately injured in a contest two years ago, but he's back and ready to perform. Then we have Bobby Thompson, one of the top guys from the USA, Irvin Toots, and then we've got the giant Albatross, Tom Stoltman, one of the absolute favorites for today, and his big brother, Luke Stoltman, another popular and favorite strongman. And finally, the return of Rob Kearney. Injured last year, he tore his tricep, he's back already. He's actually had a very quick recovery to be back for this only five months since he injured himself so it's going to be interesting to see what kind of shape they're all in they're going to be nervous before this first event and i'll tell you something andy they want to really set off with as much determination as possible they want to score big points on the deadlift because they're all worried about the mystery event the arm over arm flag hoist that mystery event it's been built if you've been following us on social media as the mystery event no one knew apart from just a handful of the organizers what that event will be. None of these competitors were able to prepare, able to train specifically for that hoist. They found out late last night. We saw them early today as they arrived at the arena, just trying to get a feel for that event. There's gonna be a lot of tactics involved and lots the later they go in that event, the more they're able to learn from competitors who go early on. So as you said, the deadlift is all to play for here. Looking to, to do better in the deadlift to allow them to have a better position later on in that second event. 100% Andy. And the deadlift itself is going to be an interesting one. It's not your standard deadlift. They are going to be timed on the repetitions they do. So we're starting off, oh, I, think the, I think the heaviest lift we have today is 440 kilos. Anyone gets that? You know, someone like JF Caron, he's confident that the speed isn't going to be an issue because he's an athlete that's looking to complete the whole five reps. But the other guys are going to be wanting to do reps quickly so that they can particularly, I think, up to the 400 kilo lift. That's going to be the decider. I think that's the rep that will really determine how this competition goes ahead. Because for the guys that don't get 400, they're going to be in trouble. I don't expect too many to get the 440. That's a seriously big number but a lot of these guys are capable of the 400. So it's going to come down to time. Indeed, it's the Axel Deathlift. Never has there been a friendlier event named in Strongman. The way to start off at 300 kilos, then 340, 380, 20, 440. And as Lars just said, and you get above 400, it's that 420 mark will really be laying down a marker. And also, Unique to this event, the competitors will be loading their own weight. How's that going to affect them? It's a, it's a new element for them. I mean, most of them will be used to loading weights in the gym and, you know, stuff like that. But the speed that they can get those weights onto the bar, get themselves strapped back into the deadlift. You know, I think tactics is what type of straps. Well, we've got, we've got to depend on what straps they're using. But we're off to the commercials now. We'll be back with live action in three minutes. Our first event, just moments away. Started with a can, added 200, no 250, no 300 milligrams of natural caffeine. Extracted from plants, yeah, plants. So you could do this, but not this. Vitamins B3, B6, B12, you're welcome. BCAAs, that just happened. Plus electrolytes, because sweat, and CoQ10, because we had room. And then we made it taste good without the sugar. Now, go drink it. That's how we made rain. Total body fuel.
Okay, guys, we are back. We're getting on the athletes ready for the deadlift. We've got about two minutes to wait until we see our first athlete, which will be Ethel Ingelson. He's going to be going up on his own, so we're going to get a good idea of how challenging this first event is. Starting with 300 kilos, then the athletes, the 300, I'm expecting these athletes to blitz through pretty, pretty quickly. 340, same kind of thing. Once we get up to the 380, that's going to be more of a challenge for a lot of these guys. And then we're getting up to the big weights. 420 kilos, and then the final 440. The guys to look out for on this event, obviously, the Hummer deadlift record holder is J.F. Caron. This guy has just such an incredible back of iron. Rauno Heindler, one of the best deadlifters in the world. Tom Stoltman's making huge progress on his deadlift. And the return of Konstantin Janasha. I cannot wait to see what kind of shape he's in. Is he fully recovered from those injuries? Spoke to him earlier today, and he said he cannot wait to get back into competitive action. Just quickly run through the event so you guys know today. We're starting off with the axle deadlift. Deathlift, I should say. Uh, then moving on to the flag hoist. The guys have all been trying to figure out the best way to do this. It's going to be very, very important for them to go later on so that they know. So they know the exact order that they get to go in. Moving on to the dumbbell. That's a much more standard event for the guys. The medley is going to be fast and action packed. And then finishing with that incredible 10 stone atlas run. And I believe our first athlete is just about to come out. We have Ivers Schmockstellis. Unfortunately, one of the athletes have to go on their own as we've only got 15 guys competing. So he's drawn the short straw on the deadlift. Ivers a great all-round deadlifter, uh, all-round athlete. Deadlift might not be his absolute favorite of the, the lifts today. Really look out for him on the loading. So he's a super fast athlete. And I like that. It says best lift, still improving. So we will see once he starts today. So Ivers is going for the figure of eight straps. There's two different types of straps that you can use in strongman. Figure of eights mean you really don't need to worry about your grip at all. You just wrap the strap around the bar, back onto the wrist. Grip doesn't become an issue at all. And there you go, a nice quick lift. His first lift completed quickly. He's out of the straps and onto the loading. So loading 25 kilo plates to start with. I was told it was going to be 20, but 25 kilo plates. Straps himself back in. And again, a very easy lift there for Ivers. He's just grabbing the plates off the helpers there on the side. Straps himself back in. And another easy lift. He's on to the fourth. I'm not sure what the loaders are doing there, whether they're supposed to be doing that or not. Ivers is not complaining though. He straps himself back in. Lift number four. This starts to get a bit more challenging now. There we go. He's working hard. He's working hard. And he locks it out. A great lift there by Ivers. I think that may be the last though. It was, he had to work hard for that one. You can see it in his face and in his body. Straps himself in again. He's not taking time between these lifts. He's trying to get it done as quickly as possible. Looking for maximum points. A big effort. If he gets this, this will be superb lifting. No, that weight was fixed to the ground. Not only is it a huge weight, he's already expended a huge amount of energy just getting up to that weight. But I think he'll be pretty pleased with that performance. We will find out the exact times for his four lifts. The referee today, Terry Hollands. 
absolute legend of the strength world. And the head referee today is the one and only Zadrunas Zaviskas. So the athlete certainly won't be arguing with the referees today. Test your mic. Andy, talk to me. Lars, what a day it's been. Yeah. Both these lifters making short work of these first few reps. Misha, the over 40s world record holder in the deadlift. This man will go until he bleeds. He just gives 100% in every single event and contest that he does. Here we go, another good solid lift by the Russian. He's already up to the last lift. So Estepor here, the Iranian, he's just strapping himself back in. So we're back with Misha with the 440 kilos. The axle bar is so much tougher as well than a normal bar. There's no flex in that bar at all. Look at this, oh, it's coming up nicely, but he just couldn't get it past the knees. Wow, look at this effort by Estepor. He's giving everything. Is he gonna get the down signal? Wow, that was a big, huge effort there and the referee has given it to him. Best lift of 420 kilos. I think he's, he's had enough. Misha as well. Managing four lifts, both athletes there managing four lifts. So currently Misha in the lead with four reps in 43 seconds. Ivers completing four in one minute, six seconds. And Mohamed Estepor currently four in one minute, 19 seconds. So the current leader is Mikhail Shivlikov from Russia, the master's deadlift record holder. We still have some huge deadlifters to go, including this man. One of the, well, both of these men, in fact, two of the best deadlifters on the planet right now, Adam Bishop and Rauno Heinler. We could certainly see both of these athletes completing all five lifts. Solid start to the event thus far here on Strength Island. So Rauno Heinler is getting himself strapped in. Bish is ready, and both lifters begin. Easy lift, how quick was that by Rono Heinler? The weights are locked in, there's Adam Bishop, and equally as fast there with his second lift. So they've decided to scrap the loading it themselves. Athletes are staying strapped in. 
Move up again, Adam Bishop making easy work of these lifts. That's the first time we've seen him have to work a little. Beautiful lift there though by Bish. Indeed. Look at this effort by Adam Bishop. Wow, huge lift. He completed all five lifts already. <laughs> that was super fast. I think even the loaders thought he had to do another rep. And Adam Bishop recently quit his full-time job as a strength and conditioning coach at Harlequins FC. Really, well, starting to show dividends already. He's, he's such a great athlete. He's one of those guys that's really taken his time and improved year on year. And deadlift is one of his favorite lifts. He is, without question, one of the best deadlifters on the planet. Both of those men are deadlifting monsters. Adam Bishop, 150 kilos now. He used to compete in, well, under 110 kilos. 105 he was. Wow. I remember how skinny Adam was at one point. Now he is an absolute beast of a man. And Adam Bishop there take, going into second place with 36.99 for all five lifts. And Rauno smashing out all five in 27.33. Wow. That is going to be hard to beat, Andy. Well, Rauno really laying down a marker here. Remember, this is the first major strongman event of 2021. A real opportunity for all these competitors to, to really show where they are and really fill out the rest of the rest of the field. Rano really laying it down to everyone. He thought Ingolfsson getting Seth, getting himself strapped in. So Ethor is taking the, the reins from Iceland's former number one, the one and only Thor Bjornsson. Of course, Thor has his boxing match coming up. He's very focused on trying to knock out Eddie Hall. That's still to come this year. No doubt many eyes will be on there, but huge opportunity here for Ethor Ingolfsson to, to show what he has on the international stage. I'm looking forward to seeing how um, Ramin Fajanad, the Iranian, performs on this. Last time I saw him, he was a great deadlifter. He is coming back from being shot, Andy. Wow, which just the fact that he's here is incredible. But let's see what kind of shape he's managed to get himself into. Yeah, what a journey it's been to get here. How can he start the event? So first rep, up nice and easy. Easy rep there for Ethor. They need to make sure they wait for the referee's down signal at the top. Nicely solidly locked out rep there. Another 40 kilos added to the bar. Fajinard there. Going for rep number four. Oh, he's working for that out. one. And he's up to number five as well. We can see the physical toll it's taking on him. Here we go. Can he muster up all his strength? This is more than he's ever pulled on a deadlift. He's going for the fifth rep, 440 kilos on an axle. It's going, it's going, he can hitch that out. Look at the blood coming from the nose. Does he get the signal? Yes, he does. Wow, what a lift and look, you can see what it's taken to do that, but a gargantuan lift there. <coughs> New personal best. Absolutely incredible, I'm losing my voice. <laughs> <laughs> That's the physical toll this competition's taken on you, Lars. But what a start here. A world's ultimate strongman strength. Island, the, the strongman community has really been waiting with bated breath for this event. If you go back here and we, we see this final lift, look at the effort. The blood just cascading <laughs> down his face as every muscle in his body working to get that up. Wow. Incredible effort. And it came with a huge board, a 440 kilo axle deadlift. That's more than his personal deadlift of 430 kilos. It's a, it's a huge lift, especially after watching the fourth lift. I didn't expect him to get it at all. How much more How much more difficult does the axle make it? A lot of people watching this, and me included, will have done a deadlift in the gym. How much does the so axle when the, alter? When, when the graphics are coming, that's their PB deadlift from the floor. This is a higher deadlift. so. In that respect, it's slightly easier, but what makes the axle so much harder is there's no flex on the bar. A normal deadlifting bar, 
the athletes will pull and there's quite a bit of flex so you don't get the full weight off the floor straight away. With the axle, you've got to break the floor with that full weight and it just makes it so much harder. And the bar, I, I was playing with the bar earlier, it's so thick, just getting that grip. So, we have Ethel there, unfortunately only three reps there in 17 seconds. Ramin completing all five in one minute. Wow, what a marker to be laying down there. So still Rauno Heidler, that 27.33. I mean, Rauno, he's, he's renowned as an incredible deadlifter and, dead and he's demonstrated that here today. How much will these competitors have been itching to, to get to this competition? As we said, it's the first major international strongman competition oh, of this year. They're all super keen to just prove that, you know, 2021, they are the best on the planet. Rauno really laying the marker. And Rauno's got a few weaker events later, so he'll want to win this event. But we talked earlier about wanting to do well in this first event because that's going to give you a potential advantage as we go into our second event, which was billed as our mystery event. It's a flag hoist. Now, the competitors found out less than 24 hours ago. They had literally moments as they arrived here at the arena to, to have a look at the equipment and see how it worked. But the more people have a go at that event, the competitors who will go later on, we get to learn from their mistakes and that could be invaluable. 100%, they are so keen to be going out last on the second event. What performances we're seeing here, some of the world's strongest men on display. And last year was such a testing year for everyone, including our competitors here, stop and start competitions, very few competitions, of course. World's Ultimate Strongman had their feats of strength events. I know you were part of those, Loz. It was brilliant just to keep the sport alive, but we all wanted to see a live event, and that's what we've been getting excited for. Back doing strongman, head-to-head -head competitions, that's what we all want. This is what we want to see as fans. It's what these strongmen want to do as competitors. That's what they train for. They train to go head-to-head. -head. Exactly that. This is what they put the, the blood, sweat, and tears into. They want to prove man against man who is the best. Talking of blood, we saw some there in the deadlift. You get the feeling with the weights they're lifting. It may not be the last we see. <laughs> Temperature is rising here in Bahrain. It's not a bad day. Low 20s, but the sun is strong. How, that's, how is that going to affect our strongmen? Do you know what? Today's conditions are perfect. Yesterday was blisteringly hot, and then we got that storm. Now, today, the winds have, caught, have calmed down. The temperature has cooled down. The guys will appreciate that. So we're sort of, you know, mid to low 20s. It's, sun, it's sunny, but the guys will get out of the sun as soon as they've competed. And these are ideal strongman conditions. Beautiful day, but you don't, so don't want to be in the sun too long. It's strong sun out here in Bahrain. I can tell you a few of the strongmen have been spent a bit too long in it the last couple of days, enjoying the, uh, the settling in process. But no doubt they will be fully focused once they get onto these tasks at hand. We've got more competitors coming up here in the Axel Deathlift. A lot of people ask me, hey Tu, how do you get the belt that looks more beautiful than most women in the world? Well, I'll give you a hint. I don't use my enemy's blood to let them. No, not even the cow's milk. Just harvest. I use something very unique that I found on the belt oil from the beltstruggle.com. Can you imagine how many lives I would have spared if I just found this unique? Founded in 1977, 
Our quality supplements earned us a strong reputation built on trust and honesty. Building on our heritage, we continually push ourselves to formulate and manufacture the best sports nutrition supplements with billions of packs sold. We're on this journey together, stronger, faster, better. One rep at a time, one set at a time, one pack at a time. I am Animal. Back here to Bahrain and World Ultimate Strongman Strength Island. We are in the midst of the first event, the Axel Deadlift. Lost some great performances thus far. Very, very impressive so far. And obviously, Rano Heinler in the lead. I think his time is going to be hard to beat. There's not many guys that can pull not just the weight, but pull them as quickly as he does. If but we still have some incredible athletes to come. If you were looking down our list of competitors ahead of this event, was Rauno, would have been your pick for this one? Rauno, Janasha and JF Caron would be my main picks. They're, they've established themselves as, you know, some of the absolute best deadlifters on the planet time and time again. The, the real one that can shock a lot of people is Novikov. This guy doesn't look like much. And a couple of years ago, you would have said he's a weak deadlifter but he seems to be improving at a rapid pace and he's just someone you just can't predict. You talk about Novikov last year, he was the strongest man in the world, just 24 years of age. The second youngest competitor to hold that prestigious title. And you know one thing with, with him, he, he's a real thinker. I've seen him out there warming up, looking at all the events, trying to figure out the best way to do things. And tactics are very important in strongman. It's not always just about who can lift the most weight. It's understanding who can figure out events the quickest, especially on events like the, the, the mystery event that we've spoken about already. That is an event that no one has had a chance to warm up with. So they're all looking at it. They're all trying to figure out the best way. And I was watching him. He's coming up with all sorts of tactics and ideas. It's going to be interesting to see what he actually implements when it's time to lift. And look, Novikov, you know, 24 years of age, we talked about that. We'll talk about him more uh, throughout this event. But how good can he be? He's already incredible. <laughs> so it's a matter now of, you know, does he have the will to keep pushing and pushing and become, you know, a real legend like, say, as Adrina Saviska, someone that's won every major show in the sport. That will be his goal. He'll want to win, you know, at least every major show a few times to establish that he is the greatest of all time. You know, the, the, the career of a strongman, if they stay healthy, is, you know, we're seeing competitors hit in their 40s. Again, 24 years of age. He's got time to do it. And from what it, the, the rise we've seen him have in recent years shows that really the sky could potentially be the limit for him. 100%, but, but never be fooled by how quickly someone uh, manages to kind of rise to the top. You get some guys that improve very quickly and then burn out quickly, and you get other guys that just steadily keep progressing. It's not a race. He's already proved he's one of the best in the world, but he'll, want to, he'll definitely want to put a number of other titles, including this huge title today, into his mantelpiece. Indeed, he, alongside the rest of our competitors, will be looking to really lay down a mark here in this first major competition of 2021. Of course, Novikov, many said, was one of the standout stars of last year's strongman competitions, but can he do it again? in 2021 where we hope we'll get back to some normal kind of competitions we see that the legend jf coron getting set i absolutely love this guy he's a, he's one that didn't burst onto the scene he's been steadily improving year on year and here's the man we were just talking about alexei novikov yeah. they said there his best lift is 537 and a half kilos that was an 18 inch deadlift on a flexible bar. I'm interested to see how it crosses over onto the axle. Well, first rep, very smooth. easy. One rep completed. And look how quickly JF Caron pulls this. So easy for Caron, seemingly. Up and down. I expect both of these men to pull them all. Uh, Lexi working hard Already there. Already onto the last rep. Who can do it quickest out of these two? And he's got it. Look at that. Alexei ahead of JF Caron. That is huge. JF gets the rep as well. But that is a massive, wow. massive win for Alexei Novikov. And he, you, you can see how happy he is. He is happy. 
What a event. We're waiting for the official time there. We'll see where it puts him in the rankings. But what we do know is very quick. I mean, beating JF Koron in, in any heat, you know you've done a great time, but we will wait but beating see. JF on a deadlift, that's, you know, JF would have been coming in to win that event. 31 seconds even, we are being told that. To our calculations, we'll put him in second, second place. place. So Rauno Heinler still in first place with that incredible sub 30 second time. But we have, ooh, wow. <laughs> so I've just been given the official results. JF Caron, 31.1 seconds. Wow. Novikov, 27.54 seconds. Less than Sorry, just over two tenths of Rauno a second. Rauno still in the lead with his 27.33. Wow. That was <laughs> that was such a performance. You've got to think Alexi will be happy with that. 100%. I mean, he, he's a great deadlifter, but deadlift is never a cert for him. You know, especially with a stiffer bar, it just shows the improvement he's made over the last few years. When Rano at Heine is that that's an event he's known for, as we said, Novikov, not so much to come so close to almost beating him. What a marker he's just laying down. Absolutely incredible, honestly. He just improves every single time I see him. Such a dynamic athlete. Well, Bobby Thompson getting set for action here. Fantastic beard. Bobby the Nightmare Thompson. <laughs> he's really burst onto the scene the last few years. He's, he's a, a great athlete and a great guy as well. Well, the arm doing behind the scenes, he's certainly not a nightmare. He's a big teddy bear, <laughs> but he, he is a, a fantastic athlete, extremely strong. I think he's up against Konstantin Janasha, and I'm excited to see how Konstantin does. There we go. Beautiful, Easy smooth rep. first rep. Formula One changes there. <laughs> <laughs> Quick as you like, and Thompson knocks out another rep. How's Janasha performing here? Longer levers, but he gets it up. Janasha just pulls all with his back. He's got incredible lower back strength. Ridiculous traps on him. You've never seen a man with traps like this guy. He's already up to the last. Both men are. And look at that. Bobby Thompson is in shape. He's finished and he wants to go again. He thinks there's another rep. Wow. Well, Bobby Thompson thought he was taking a half day with that one. He thought there was more to come. And, well, Janasha finishes as well. We'll wait for the official time, see where we are. But again, some fantastic deadlifting here on our Axel Deathlift. That was fantastic performance there by Bobby Thompson. I'm keen to see his time. As soon as we have the official results, we will let you guys know. Look fast to me. We have wow! Janasha, 30.14 seconds for all five reps. And Bobby Thompson, nobody talking about this guy winning the deadlift. He's coming in first place, 27.1 seconds, beating the established deadlifters such as JF Caron, Rauno Heinler. Unbelievable start for the Americans. A marker laid down by Bobby Thompson, a competitor who won the 2019 Amateur Arnold, and now he's here at World Ultimate Strongman, leading the first event, the Look at this. This was his, lift. his top lift, and it was still easy. Look how quickly he locks those knees out, gets the down signal. Unbelievable lifting. Well, no wonder he thought there was more to come. It was so easy, but talking about more to come, here's the big man, Tom Stoltman. 180 kilos, and some are saying that's on the conservative side. He is looking massive. He just gets bigger every time I see him. Irvin Toots, another great athlete, just burst onto the scene last year. Phenomenal. Interesting to see this head-to-head. -head. Tom, his static strength seems to be improving rapidly, quickly. You just wonder whether being as tall as he is, if you could physically pull as quickly as say a Rauno or a Bobby Thompson. Yeah, six foot eight for Stoltman. Irvin Toots, not a short man himself. Weight goes on the bar. Easy reps there. Fast work here by Toots. The markers have been laid down and they're super quick. And Stoltman. Stoltman pulling rep number four. He's already on to five. A lot further to go for Stoltman. He does. Six for this. eight. He needs to lock out. Oh, he's losing his balance there. Oh. That's bad for him. He needs to 
recompose himself and make sure he gets this locked out if he wants to challenge Alexei Novikov in this contest. This is, this is a surprise. The awkward lift there from Tom Stolp when he just elects to end it there. Tom's, Tom's deadlift has really improved, but the axle deadlift is slightly different, as we mentioned before. And you're looking at the guys that are performing well, it's the shorter athletes. In your six foot eight, some have said he's six he's foot nine these days. a long way to go. How much harder does that make it for him? He just has to pull further. That's the, um, you know, it, it, there, there are exceptions. Depends how long people's arms are. But you could see with Bobby and with Rauno, they can shoot those hips through very, very quickly. And that does make a difference. Well, Irvin Toots is a tall man himself, but no one in this competition is as tall as Stoltman. Tom has some incredible events to come, so I expect him to be still well within the mix, but that is more points than he would have wanted to drop. Irvin Toots there. Did he get given that fourth rep? We're about to find out. That's another another short man that is actually a very good deadlifter. Well, let's, look, let's not forget, he's been voted pound for pound, Rob Kearney, the strongest man in the world. Oh, Rob is phenomenally strong. Overhead, he, he really loves the overhead events. And this is his first competition back after a horrific tri spinjus. You see Luke Stoltman, the brother of Tom Stoltman, making his way to the platform. And Rob Kearney has entered this competition on three weeks' notice. He has. And Rob was talking to me earlier, telling me the last time he competed in a full show was against Luke Stoltman. Well, here we go. Flashback time. Last time Luke got the better of him. So I'm sure Rob wants to, to inflict some revenge. But two brilliant athletes here. I think going with the tights there is a smart move. You get that smoother friction on the legs. Oh. Beautiful. Look how quickly that was by Rob. Oh, quick lift there from Luke. Good solid lift by Luke. If, if Luke's going to have a weaker event today, he would admit himself it's the deadlift. Look at Rob. He's just plowing through these lifts. Quick changes Already there. Already up to number four. Breaks it off the floor. It's a lot slower there, but still a nice solid pull. Oh, and Luke. Didn't Luke quite. needs this one. Needs to refocus here. As Kearney gets set, composes himself. Kearney's one of those athletes. If he gets it over his knees, he'll hitch it. Oh. He just doesn't have the power at the moment. Not back to maybe full strength. And Luke there, only managing three reps. He would. Luke expected probably to, to be lower down the table on this event. He has some great events coming. I'm sure how, he would have wanted four, but. How much in these events, if, if you're really struggling, if you're really struggling on a rep, how much is there, let's leave it to fight another day, there's more events to come? Do you know what, it's the smart thing to do. And it takes athletes sometimes a little bit of time to realize that. Well, is Luke Stockman, is he hobbling, is he hurt hopefully, himself? Hopefully he's not hurt himself. We'll, we'll find out exactly, I hope he hasn't. Go through the last four athletes to complete so Irvin Toots managed three in 13.28. Tom got four reps in 20.09. Luke managing three in 16.81. And Rob Kearney managing four in 22.54. That's a great performance by Rob on his first event back. Well, the, the standout for me on this event has to be Bobby Thompson. Oh my word, Bobby. out of nowhere. Yeah, I, I didn't pick Bobby to, to be even top three on this event. I know he's a great lifter, but when you've got some of those big established names, it shows the work he's putting in quietly. He's becoming one of the absolute best guys on the planet. Bobby has talked about the fact that he believes he is very statically gifted and this is an event that really plays into that. Let's see how he can really carry that momentum. But as it stands, how much confidence do these athletes take from, from winning or performing well in a first event? Massive, honestly. You know, if I could start a competition well, it pushed me on to just work harder and harder on those next events. And like we mentioned, when you win an event, you get to then go towards the end on the next event. And that is a big advantage, particularly on events where it's about distance or you kind of, you've got a good idea of what you need to beat. Sometimes when you don't know what you need to beat, you'll go in with, with tactics to maybe be a bit safer or, or, or you'll just go flat out. They can look at how the other guys do, see where they make the mistakes, and decide whether it's worth going flat out and trying to take the win, or do they just try and beat certain people to, to, to pick up enough points 
thinking of the overall score. Strongman isn't always about just being the strongest guy in one lift. You have to think about how you're going to expand, expand the energy through the whole contest. Remember, we've got five grueling events. The first one's down, but we've still got four more, and they still need to be strong when it comes to the Atlas Stones later on today. When we talk about the confidence that a great performance in this first event can give you, for, for those competitors who have underperformed to their own expectations, is that a knock going forward? Massively, you know, everyone wants to get off to a good start. But someone like Tom Stoltman, I think he's got enough good events to really claw back. We see there, I think Bish with the mouth guard and needed that because he was biting down to pick up that lift and then here. There's still a lot to play for. Four events and with 15 athletes, there's a lot of points to play for. So How much can fatigue per factor say? We talked about five events, three hours, really back to back. Oh, massive. They, these guys have need to need to have worked on their conditioning. It's not, like I said, I say this many times, Strongman isn't just about being good on one lift. You need enough energy to expand through the whole contest. They have to be strength athletes. It's not just about being a big squatter or a big deadlifter as much as these events play a part. The guys that can consistently be in the top three or top five, each event, they're the guys that are going to win. And that's where someone like Novikov is exceptional. You talk about the, the always up there near the top. Again, we see the effort these competitors are putting in there. The blood streaming from the nose. It shows you how hard these lifts are. You know, it's easy for us to sit here and watch, but the effort that they put themselves through and the suits that they're wearing, a lot of the guys wearing deadlift suits, that constricts your body and that can help, you know, that can increase the blood pressure, the, the air pressure when you're kind of trying to brace through the midsection. I think it's so easy to sit here sometimes as a fan and think, oh, that's not, that way's not so heavy. These guys make it look easy. Yes, they make it look easy. These are the strongest men in the world. But when you see a moment like that, you see the physical exertion. That look at the legs shaking. His face is trying to be poker face, but you can see the, the legs going there. There's a lot of effort. But look at that, he's happy. Yeah, as he should Look be. at that. Trying to start 2021 as he left off. And look at Bobby Thompson here. This, oh was, this was the performance for me. Every rep looked comfortable. Janasha coming back from injury. I've been excited to see Janasha. Still a long contest to go. He, he is one of the best deadlifters on the planet, just not quite in top shape right now. Well, Bobby Thompson, a real standout here in this first event at World Ultimate Strongman. Thank you for joining us around the world to enjoy this fantastic event. And no doubt Bobby Thompson will be very pleased Look. to have your eyes on him as he puts on the performance of a career thus far. Well, you know, Bobby's not one of those guys that's always seen on social media and, you know, talked about. But Bobby is an incredible strong man and he's proving that today already. And his father is out here with him in Bahrain. Be very pleased to see that performance. And Tom Stoltman. Do you know what? I think a couple of years ago, Tom's performance of this would have affected him for the whole contest. He's really matured over the last few years. And I think we're going to see a great fight back from him. He knows he's got good events to come. This next event, his height and his reach and his body weight, I think will be good. Loading, he's unbelievably quick. Stones, he's got so much confidence in. And his dumbbell is getting better and better and better. The, the, he, the Atlas Stones is his event. He is, I think it's fair to say, almost unbeatable unless he makes a huge mistake. Sure, and obviously that's, that's always possible, but he's, he's, going to, he's going to need to put in a performance on every single event now. Brother Luke. That kind of flavor. That kind. Then add a floral punch of lychee slammed into a tangy burst of lilac corn. Give it zero sugar, but still make it taste good. Paradise good. Then pack it with powder so you can outdo you. That's what goes into New Rain Lilacoy Lychee. A total body fuel.
Welcome back to Bahrain and World's Ultimate Strongman. The first major strongman competition of 2021 already. Some fantastic performances in our first event, the Axel Deathlift. But now we move on to our second event. In the build up to this event, it was billed as the mystery event. None of our competitors, not myself or Loz, not anyone, but a handful of the organizers knew what this event would be. The strongman arrived here in Bahrain unable to prepare. They found out less than 24 hours ago. They've had a matter of minutes to look at this equipment as they entered the arena to try and find the best approach. And now, Loz, we're going to see who has figured it out the best. Yeah, this is really going back to old school strongmen where the athletes didn't really know what they'd be training for. This is going to be about who has the best tactics and who can learn from other people's mistakes. Now, Lars, I saw you uh, just before the show went out having a little play with this, trying to figure it out. If you were stepping in here as one of the first competitors on this flag lift, how would you approach it? I've been thinking about that. And, you know, if, if, if it was me, I'd be trying to use my body weight to an advantage and I've got a strong grip. So I'd be trying to take longer pulls and use my weight to kind of pull it down, get into a low stance, big, solid, long pulls. I tend to find if I went for the shorter pulls, my biceps would burn out quickly. The, the real interesting factor with this event is they have to control the weight down. If they let go of the rope, they will get a no lift and they will have wasted all that effort to put it up. So sometimes you've got to keep your, your head screwed on right on this type of event. It's going to be interesting. I think the different builds of the athletes, I think, you know, the shorter guys are going to probably go with a more bicep-y pull. The taller guys, someone like a JF Caron, uh, a Tom Stockman, they're going to take these big long pulls, use that body weight, and try and get as much movement each pull as possible. Well, Bobby Thompson was a real standout in that Axel Deathlift beat. Rainio, Rainio Heiner into second place, a man well known for his deadlift. Bobby Thompson, six foot one, about 160 kilos. Is there any way you think he can maintain his lead in this event? I would be surprised if Bobby won this event, if I'm totally honest. But, you know, he's going to have the advantage of going last. He's going to see the most effective way of doing this. I'm guessing how to do this it's still at the moment. I don't know the best way. It's a new event. It's, it's going to be interesting. I think once we, we've seen some of the athletes go, we'll get a much better idea of the, tactic, the best tactics to use. And that's the huge advantage now of going last. Bobby is going to get to watch every single athlete. He's going to go in with a game plan and he's going to know what's a good time or a good amount of reps to, to, to be aiming for. Indeed, that was the, the whole pretense of that first event. If you win that first event, you get to go last in this second event. So really, all to play for here. You thought Ingersoll will be our first competitor in this flag pull. As you see, the beautiful setup we've got here in Bahrain. They've really pulled out all the stops, of course, still restrictions in place no fans allowed here but thank you for joining us wherever you are watching world's ultimate strongman strength island we cannot wait for a day very soon we hope where we can welcome you back to our event i can tell you the atmosphere here is incredible all week we've been here with the strongmen they've been getting set the excitement's been palpable and they're right now here getting set to compete in our second event the flag hoist Wind starting to pick up here, getting breezy. It is hot. It's around about quarter to three local time, low 20 degrees. Well, as you said, this is perfect conditions, but as you see the wind on those flags, will that play any factor well, as those weights get hoisted up? I, I was going to say, it's perfect conditions for most events. This one <laughs> could be the exception. And you can see, you know, the, the pivot point is, is moving around. And I think if you try and go fast on this, you know, using, say, the, the tactic that I would, you've got the risk of the, the weight swinging around. So it, it's going to, you know, I think some athletes are going to take a risk and really try and go quickly. Others will go for a much safer, slower and steady approach. You talked about long levers, the longer arms might be favoured here. So to your mind, does Tom Stoltman have a chance of winning this one? If, if you're looking at a physique that's built to do this event, you'd pick Tom Stoltman. You know, you what think about that... Milos? Well, you, you know, you put on maybe 100 pounds of muscle, <laughs> we, we, we'd have a chance. And but. the rest. And the rest. One of the beautiful things of being around you uh, strong men 
all week uh, when you talk about weight. Me and my friends might say, oh, I'm 85 kilos, I'm 86 kilos. You still talking double figures of 45, 55, 85. You just omit the one. It's a given that all of you are 100 plus kilos. Uh, and the rest. And, and the rest. <laughs> Some of us closer to 200. So this is, this is, for me, this event could really throw the competition, you know, wide open. Of course, this is a mystery event here. The competitors only found out about it, you know, last night. But in the world of strongmen, are the comparable events that they would have competed in? They're similar events. So, you know, arm over arm type pulls are fairly common. You see them regularly. But this is with a twist. Uh, normally, they're seated. They can use that leg drive. This time, it's pulling st in a stood up position. I know, looking at, I was, I was over there. I had to go myself. And you still I, got I, it, Lars. I'm uh, going to well, tell you right now, you've still I, got it. I did a rep, but I can tell you my biceps were burning. My grip was burning. And one rep was all right. But I know that second and third rep, it's going to start getting excruciatingly painful. And we so, watched Alexei Novikov uh, just have his one attempt to see how he would figure it out. And remember, the competitors have to lower it down under control. And his instinct was, once he, once he got it to the height that was required, he let go. So it's going to be intriguing to see with no practice, no time to drill this event, will instincts override what they're supposed to be doing here? Will reps be missed just because of a momentary lapse of concentration? A very intriguing event coming up here in our second event here on Strength Island. Beautiful setting here in Bahrain. We've got to thank Bahrain for welcoming us here, us here pulling out all the stops. It really has been a fantastic trip. I know all the crew, all the competitors have nothing but incredibly warm words. Of course, the Formula One testing taking place. We've been sharing a hotel yes. with the Formula One uh, teams and they're all enjoying their time here. Really a fantastic setting for all types of sporting events and indeed Strongman right up there. It's definitely a country that enjoy their sporting events. So, there we have the results from the first event. Bobby Thompson taking first place. Rauno Heinler, Alexei Novikov, Konstantin Janasha, JF Caron, Adam Bishop. All of those are big deadlifting names that I would have had in the top five other than Bobby Thompson. And I know he's a great deadlifter. I think there's a little mistake on the bottom there. But Bobby definitely won that event. Hey, Bobby lifted enough for two people. He deserves two <laughs> places on that board. You look at Luke Thompson and Irvin Toots, will they be disappointed after that first performance? Uh, Luke Stoltman probably expected the deadlift to be his worst event. Um, Irvin, I think, is going to be a... He would have preferred to be mid-table, you know. I think he, he would have felt he had a chance of being mid-table on that type of event. He certainly wouldn't have been going in thinking he's going to win it. But he has some great events to come. And that's the great thing with Strongman. It does Different events favor different guys. Some of them are a little bit more athletic and fast. Some of them focus more on the static strength. The best guys can do it all. And, and that's, that's what we'll see at the end of the contest. And this is the incredible thing about Strongman. It's not just who can lift the biggest weight. There is so much involved from strength to power to conditioning to tactics. There are so many different athletic disciplines in this sport. That's why it's so fantastic to watch it again. World's Ultimate Strong and putting on this first major competition of 2021. And we are just moments away from the second event here in Bahrain. I always like to compare Strongman as the, the, the decathlon of strength sports. You know, you need to be so good in so many different areas. And that's why the greats can kind of cons consistently rise to the top no matter what the events that are thrown at them are. Is that Big Z making his way? Onto the, onto the floor. Big Z and Terry Hollands as the referees together. I what mean, a what a powerful set, uh, pair that is to, to be keeping order. Yeah, in I mean today's they, contest. They, they could easily just uh, flick their names into competitors and be right up there with the best of them. Two oh. absolute legends of strongman, keeping keeping the rules enforced here. You talk about big men, Terry Holland. One time, over 200 kilos. He certainly slimmed down a lot since his biggest days. I mean, competing in bodybuilding competitions as of late. Dropped down to 6% weight. 
body fat. He and looked, still up 140 kilos, I think, at I think that he point. He's just gone around the 135 mark, he told me. But yeah, he, he really did incredible. When you look at the transformation he made, and now much fitter, you know, he's over 40 now. He, he, he feels so much better than he ever did. He's Maybe been, down slightly on top end strength, but still an incredible athlete and, you know, someone that can step into any contest. And, you know, Terry's, Terry tried this event earlier as well. And, you know, he, he'd be good on this type of event. Those big long levers, that body weight. He's athletic. He's got a very strong grip. Yeah, Terry has been on fine form here in Bahrain. Actually, bo both the referees and myself, we were all kind of messing around together and seeing what we do. Um, but it is different when you're just testing out and then it's I think a lot of people would time. like to, to see that on camera. Loss. You want to pop out there and just show us uh, while we're waiting for the second well, competition to get going. I, um, I'll leave the hard work to the other guys <laughs> today. It is certainly interesting having an event that nobody could prepare for. How much will that first event, that deadlift of such huge weight, how much will that have taken out of our competitors? It will vary from athlete to athlete. The guys that could, like, someone like Rauno made it look so easy, it wouldn't have taken too much out of him. I think it was, um, was it Estepor who, who gave absolutely everything? Sorry, it wasn't Estepor, it was um, Ramin Fajanad. And, um, you know, his nose was bleeding, the blood was coming out of him. You could see the effort that he put in. He's going to feel that. that. That was like max effort for him. It's going to take it out of his body. Rauno looked like he had more in, in, you know, in the tank. He's going at sort of 80%. He can recover quicker from that. Anyone who follows Strongman will have seen the, uh, the blood from the nose on, on lifting huge weights. What's that an indication of? Is it, hey, this is, this is the max? Yeah, it's, it's the blood pressure that's like suddenly shooting up from the exertion that they're giving on that event, especially when they're wearing suits that constrict everything. Those super suits that they wear, they're trying to get a little bit of rebound out of the bottom of the lift. But the pressure that they create, plus... You know, the adrenaline that the athletes have, the heat that we're competing in, um, it, it all contributes to that, that blood pressure increase. It's showing that max effort that they're putting themselves to. And it, it looks a lot worse than it is. You know, people can kind of get a little scared when they see the blood coming out of their nose. It is a, it's not a common sight. You don't see it all the time. But guys like Misha, Kuklo uh, Misha Shivlikov, because he's so just keen to give his 100% all the time, it, sometimes when you go to that level, these things happen. Well, our second event here, the mystery event, the flag hoist that our competitors only found out about yesterday evening. They've not had a chance to practice. They had a few moments to inspect the equipment as they arrived. Ethor Ingolson, our first competitor to try. Six foot one, 246 kilos, not the longest levers in this competition, Loz, which you think might be key. Yeah, I think he's, he's definitely one of the shorter athletes, but here we go, he's making a good solid start. Good big long pulls. Can That's it. That's one rep. It. He just needs to control it down. And there we go. First rep in the bag. 60 second time limit on this event. How many reps can our competitors get? Now, one thing that's going to be happening now is hands are going to start burning. The, the, the lactic acid buildup in the forearms, that really contributes in this event. The biceps will be burning. The lats. It's two repetitions. Looking for the third. He's making good, solid progress here. So just so people watching back home know, each repetition is being timed. So it's about speed as well. But obviously, the most repetitions will win. You can see well, his hands are hurting there. And he's had enough. Three reps there. Just three under 60 seconds if, that, if we're going by the whistle. Three reps is very respectable. It's going to be hard to do much more than that. We were talking earlier, and you thought that maybe, maybe four reps in the time would be feasible. Yeah, I think 60 seconds is not an awful lot of time. Um, four reps, I think a couple of the guys can do. Particularly, like I said, you know, if, if you can make those first few as quick as possible. But again, you just can't afford to make a mistake. If that weight comes down and you don't have control of it and you lose that rep, it's going to be the, the, the energy expenditure for not getting a rep. That really mentally breaks people sometimes. Well, there are 15 competitors here. They'll be going head to head throughout this contest but of course with 15 competitors one person will go by themselves and Ethel was the uh, unfortunate competitor there from now on it's going to be head to head eyeball to eyeball as we just reset ahead of our second attempt here 
on the flag hoist. So there we see Thor again. See the power he puts into each pull, getting right down to the floor. What do you make of his approach to this? Again, we're really figuring this event out as we go along. It's really tough being the first guy to go. All the, the guys that are going to come after will learn from each one. And, you know, we've all got ideas, but we'll figure out what works the best as the athletes go. And that's the, like I said, I've said it already, but the huge advantage of going towards the end. He went for the big long pulls. You know, he's staying low to the ground. He didn't try to reach up too high. He was staying low to the ground often, even though he was trying to stretch with the arms. Maybe he could have used more of his body and more height in terms of uh, maybe jumping and using that body weight. Here's Irvin Toots getting set up. If you were coaching these athletes, what did you learn from that first? Is there any feedback you would give to a competitor going into this? You know, when you're this close to a comp, or this, this close to an event, you don't want to change too much. It can confuse oh. you. If it, they'll all have different ideas in their head of what they want to do, and oh. then it's just about giving 100%. Well, Luke Stoltman has the gloves on. That's, That's a smart move for letting the rope slip through his hands there. He's being quick on the way down. It's not even been 10 seconds, and he's almost done a second rep. So this is very impressive. And that having the gloves on is allowing the competitors to let the rope slide through their hands. A quicker but controlled descent. That's really I'm saving them time. I'm liking this technique from Luke. He's using that leg power that he's got staying low and crouched, but powerful arms. He's keeping the arms close yeah. to his chest. Big, long stretch. And Toots goes down, trying to do almost a seated pull Toots on the floor, here. but it looks slower. He's not managing to keep those arms moving. And now the fatigue is kicking in. You can see the biceps pumping up. The grip will be, look at there, he's trying to adjust the gloves. These reps are timed, so the quicker they do the this earlier is, reps. This is an exceptional performance now. Well, Luke did do so well in the deadlift. Want to perform here, this final is, 10 seconds. This is what I said, now he's wrapping the rope around his hands. His hands are given up. There's yeah. nothing left in the grip. Really, really impressive performance. Four reps, like I said before, and it's very, very... Yeah, that's going to be hard to beat, I think. Well, we certainly saw, I think, the Sorry. gloves paying, playing a pivotal role there, allowing for the rope to slide through. Remember, they have to lower the weight under control. Doesn't mean they can't let it slide down, but without those ropes, that would destroy oh, their, their hands. hands would just be burnt, you know, from the friction of the rope. So, clever tactics there. You can tell his biceps and his forearms are absolutely pumped. Even his hands are sore, even with the gloves. And I, I did touch that rope. It's rough. It's... You, would, you certainly wouldn't want that sliding through without the gloves. Well, we are learning this event as we go on. Great performance there by Luke Stoltman. Again, this is old school strongman where guys didn't know what events would be turning up and you had to figure things out. So Luke Stoltman in the lead, lifting, getting four repetitions in 41.28. Just to show how impressive that was, Ethor did three in 41.28. And Irvin did three in 38.70. Before we started, we thought that maybe four in a minute was possible. I mean, if you can keep it up, it looks like five's there. Five but again, it's the fatigue. It's whether their biceps, their forearms and their hands are capable of still holding onto that rope by then. So, Estepor. I think that's Ivers. So, one rep for each of them. I don't believe Ivers is wearing gloves either. Nope. Estepor certainly is, but that may be that may be a mistake. But right now he's certainly making some speed. He's been very quick on the way up, but a little slower on the way down. Yeah, you, you can see the seconds just slipping you see away. Estepor is higher, but every time Ivers seems to catch him up on the way back up, but he's losing that time because he's not using the gloves. He has to control that rope. He can't just let it slide through his hands. A moment ago when we saw the two shot, you could see the seconds being lost as the weights were coming down here. And now, now the, the fatigue fa kicks in. Yeah, final 12 seconds of this event. This is a great performance by both men. Right. Oh, he's still controlling it. And there we go. No time to get another rep. Was that four for both athletes there? We'll get official confirmation in just a moment, but what we have certainly learned is gloves make the difference. Yeah, what we're seeing is that the gloves help on the way down. The guys can save that time. Ivers then very, very good pulling the, the rope down, but as he had to release it, because he has the, the friction burning his hands, he had to control it that little more. So Mohamed Estepor there, three reps in 
Ivers hitting four in 52-72. Wow. Second place for Ivers behind Luke Stoltman with a performance of four in 41.28 seconds. Some great markers being laid down. And now, now we've got two characters of the sport. Rob Kearney, I've had the opportunity to talk to him quite a bit during this trip. A real charismatic individual. Been great for the sport of Strongman, as is this competitor. Mikhail Shivlakov, a veteran of this sport. 40, year old, 40 years old now and still quite literally going strong. These are two of the most popular athletes. Shivlakov doesn't speak a word of English, but you can have a conversation with him. He puts such effort in. He, he animates everything, he, and he always gives everything in a cop. He just wants to please a crowd. He's just the kind of person that wants to make you smile. He wants you to be happy. And even if it means he's going to put himself through hell to do it, well, here he's go. happy to put himself through it. Getting set for this third round. Oh, so Shivlakov quick. Shivlakov with the gloves. Rob going barehanded. Oh, Shivlakov already one rep up and... Again, we're seeing, lowering it down, currently a real nice disadvantage. Nice big pull there by Shivlikov on that first one. He's going for those bigger pulls. Using that, that body have, weight. Yeah, that would have been my tactic, to try and get a long pull each time and get yourself back up quickly. And look, he's already down. Two reps for Shivlikov as we enter the final 30 seconds of this one minute. The problem is, Andy, by the third rep, fatigue has kicked in. Again, you can no see now the difference from rep one for Shivlikov. Now he's struggling to hold on. Every time he jumps up, that one hand has to hold the rope, and he's struggling. Final 15 seconds. Look, both competitors looking for their third oh. rep as Rob Kearney. Sh did Shivlikov just get it before? We'll find out. Final five seconds. That That's may be for both to competitors. Tell. Rob may have sneaked that. And Rob Kearney Interested just to see questioning the here if... That final rep counted. He seemed, as the weights fell over, Didn't does that mean he lost control? We'll find out. As soon as we have the official results, guys, we will let you know. Shivlikov, as always, looks happy. <laughs> Blowing a kiss to us all there. What a character. Two great characters there in our third heat of this event. so interesting watching you know two reps wasn't so bad there for Shivlikov by that third rep the fatigue was kicking in he was struggling to hold on biceps forearms the lats that and the, the, the grip that's you know it's a real test I suppose something that uh, you know as non strongman can relate to perhaps a rope you know at, at school trying to climb a rope you climb a rope once you can do it try climbing a rope over and over again similar muscle groups I would assume for that oh, definitely very similar so both athletes hitting three. Mikhail in 50.15 seconds. And Rob hitting three in 55.78. Well, Luke Stockman still well out ahead. Four reps in 41.28 seconds. But that's showing how impressive that performance was. Well, and here comes his brother, the Albatross, six foot eight. 180 kilos of Tom Stockman. And we talk about the long levers, the longest arms. Probably in this competition is Tom Stockman electing not for gloves. I was going to say, he's not going with the brothers' tactics of using the gloves. Ramin. But he does have the longest wingspan by a mile in this contest. Ramin Farjaned with the gloves. And we have seen it really helps on the descent. But again, key in this, the fatigue that sets it around the 32nd I'm mark. interested to see how quickly Tom can get this first rep with those... You know, that height advantage. Here he's halfway go. up with each pull, but he's gone for the shorter pulls. He's just using the biceps. Short pulls. Neck and neck almost. There's one rep for both men. And Look at the descent uh, of Farjanad. Very, very quick on the descent there. Now, I was expecting Tom to use those levers and get much bigger, longer pulls. He's going for the shorter pulls, making the biceps do more work. And Farjanad is actually ahead. Well, Tom may be quicker getting it up, but he's slower getting it down, and these seconds and Tom, matter. Tom catching up on the way up. But yeah, again, Farjanar just that little further ahead. He's already onto his fourth rep. If he gets this, well, it'll be a great Final 20 seconds. Will Tom Stockman regret not having gloves? And now you can see the fatigue kicking in with Tom. His grip's giving out. The biceps are burning. Final 10 seconds as Ramin, Ramin gets another rep. 
Tom's and, hands have gone. And I've got to ask you, it's... Tom was so quick in getting the way up, but having to control it so much coming down, is that extra fatigue on what, the arms? Massively. I think the guys going with the gloves have chosen the right tactics. Now, I'm not sat here saying I would have done that tactic, but I think it's the smart tactic watching now. And again, as an athlete watching on, they should be looking, thinking, and you know, that the was time that you can save, letting that rope come down through those gloves, you're saving energy. You're not squeezing the rope like the guys are that don't have the gloves. Because every time you're squeezing that rope, the fatigue that's kicking in and, and affecting that grip, as soon as your grip goes, it doesn't matter how strong your grip is. Once those forearms are full of blood and it's gone, you, be, you can go from vice grip to having nothing. And that was evident there with Tom's performance. Again, Tom, when you look at the speed, he was getting the flag up. It was very good, but it was those seconds coming down. And that's where Ramen really picked up. And now Bish, Adam Bishop. Bishop going with the gloves. So Tom Stoltman hitting three reps in 41-6. And Ramin getting four. Very good performance there by Ramin. 49-45. So we still have Luke Stoltman in the lead at 41-28 for four repetitions. Oh, great performance there from Ramin. So is this Bish and... And Caron. Oh, here we go. Caron. Immense grip strength. Again, choosing not to use the gloves. And Bish slower up. Karan now. First rep completed. Let's see how many seconds Bish can maybe save with those gloves. Karan going for the big jumps using his body weight. He's back up using that weight to pull it down rather than the biceps. Jeff Karan looks to clock up his second rep. And Bish now looks to lower down. Bish going for the safer approach. He's back down. Two repetitions. Look at that pull there by Jeff Karan. Final 25 he seconds. Hits the top. Uh, JF has an incredible grip. His hand strength is, is superb. Well, he's going for his fourth rep here. Top of the table is four reps. How quickly can Karan get this? Can he get this as we enter the final 10 seconds? He needs this rep. He's got it. He's lost half the flag there. <laughs> he's not going to have time for another rep. Uh, from the I clock, it looked about 55 seconds or so yeah, for those I think four around reps. There. Bish just going for a very methodical approach there. Maybe should have gone a little harder. It's hard to say, you know, you can go and give 100% and burn out very, very quickly, or you can try and plan that energy expenditure. And as we said at the start of this, it's such a new event. Tactics are always going to be important. I'm interested to see Novikov. That guy reminds me well, of Marius Pujanovsky. <laughs> well, you're, you're he was a guy that was, was just great at figuring things out. Also, uh, uh, Magnus Ver Magnusson back in the 90s. These were athletes that just seem to be able to figure things out quickly. Constantine. And Novikov reminds me of that. Constantine Janasha, 196, long arms. And Loz, as I said, you have to get your wish to see Alexei Novikov enter the fray in this second event, the flag hoist. I said at the start, Novikov is such a consistent athlete. And this, this is the one event, if, you, if there could possibly be a bad performance from him, it's the unknown event, but I just can't see it. He somehow figures things out. I'm looking forward to seeing what tactics he uses. He's such got the a, gloves. Such a dynamic, athletic competitor. Very quick, and again, 24 years of age. He's getting bigger, he's getting stronger, and he's getting smarter. You would look at him, though, and you wouldn't say that guy's, you know, the strongest man on the planet. I've got to say, look, coming from me, he was 86 kilos. It's not saying a lot, but you, I've seen Novikov around the hotel, and he's certainly a big, big man. But you go into a lot of gyms, you'll see guys almost as big as him, but they can't do what he can do. And that's a real sign of the Definitely athleticism, that the natural gifts he's got. He, he's such a talented young man. Works very, very hard. You know, he really does train hard. He's very smart with it. And Loz, I was watching your YouTube channel, you did a fantastic video on him and you sort of charted his progression and you see how much he's, he's really grown, but the weight he was lifting as a young man. Well, he had this baby man. face and he was still, <laughs> you know, beating grown oh. men. And that's a sign of that, that, that natural innate ability he's got as a young man, being able to outlift men who are much, much bigger, much, much more experienced. And then he's up against someone that certainly doesn't have a baby face. <laughs> well, you can say that to him, I won't. He's born with a big beard. It's an impressive beard. Oh, look at this. Alexi using all his weight trying to get a good head start here. Look at that. Jumping, jumping from the from floor. Jumping from Janasha. Oh. 
And a quick first rep there. Well, Lexi getting Less one off in about 12 seconds. Look at that. He's using the body weight. Here's that smarter we're talking about. He's using every ounce of his weight. I think he's trying to save his energy in terms of arms. The only thing is it may affect your grip, having to squeeze that tight to hold on to the reps. He's already got through two. Look at that. He's not really pulling hard. He's using that weight to pull the rope down and squeezing hard with the rope. And then the gloves on there, you can get that rope down a little quicker. Janasha putting in a solid performance, but he's asking questions there. And look at this. Novakov continuing to pull. He's got... They both need one more rep, to be honest. 16 seconds left. Here we go. Pulls again. Pulls again. He needs that rep. He's got it. How quickly the can flag has totally been eaten now. <laughs> I think that was four reps. Circa 55 seconds if the clock is, is to time. It's going to come down to time for a lot of these athletes. Who was the quickest for four reps? I believe Luke. I, I believe Luke Stoltman is still in the lead. Well, Alexi, will be happy with that? I think he'll be pleased with it. Again, Alexi is looking at consistent performances. He knows to win the competition. Top five to top three on each event makes you very, very hard to beat. And you made a great comparison to the, uh, the the decathlon. You know, it's not about excelling at one event. It's about consistency. And that is really what has driven Alexei Novikov to, well, last year particularly, the top of the strongman world. Yeah. You you look at the greats from the, like, a Brian Shaw, a Zadrina Saviskas, a Thor Bjornsson. They didn't win every event but they were consistently near the top, and that's what makes you a great strongman. Well, here's a man who had a fantastic performance earlier, Rauno oh. Heiner. One thing I've got to point out about Rauno, he's coming back from a, uh, having oh. stitches in his hands. If you follow him on Instagram, he had a real bad accident. His hand is messed up, so I cannot see him doing that well on this event. Well, let's see how it goes. He says his hand's okay, but we're about to find out as Bobby Thompson, who had a standout performance earlier today. Bobby with a good quick rep there, using that weight. He's not the tallest athlete, but he's pulling fast and hard with every single rep. We know Bobby's in great form. Rauno looks like he's having to... Look, you can see his grip slipping already. His grip's never been his strength. He's an amazing deadlifter, but grip has always been his weakness. Yeah. And now, on top of it, having stitches in your hand, oh. this event must be a You've nightmare. You've got to think, when he found out what the event was late last night, he'd have been disappointed. This is not what he wanted, but he's still continuing you to fight, see, and indeed he like stops. But Bobby Thompson's still continuing. 20 seconds left. Bobby's doing well. Nice, solid performance. Like we said, Bobby's not the tallest guy out there, but he's working hard. He's working hard for this next rep. Ooh, did he get it? I'm not sure Doesn't he got that. Doesn't look like, like no, he, he did. Think he's finished there. We'll so the two best guys from the deadlift not getting the strongest performance on the second event. And that, again, we talk about you need that consistency. Well, that brings, to a, that brings to the end our second event here on Strength Island. More Strongman coming up here from World's Ultimate Strongman. By Gil. What's up? Three. Count them. Two new flavors from Rain Total Body Fuel. Cherry Limeade, wild cherry with a hint of lime, and white gummy bear, tangy tart pineapple goodness. <laughs> Feel that? 300 milligrams of natural caffeine, electrolytes, BCAAs, plus CoQ10. We like that. Sugar, zero. Next, step up your game. That's how you beat cheat day. New Rain Cherry Limeade and white gummy bear. A total body fuel times two. There is a stronghold. It will be heavily guarded. Of course it is. It's the most valuable thing in the world. We will send a dozen Viking ships through the landing. And raid, pillage, until we make it there. No survivors! Yeah! Yeah! We are in the hands of all the yeah! So are you guys doing all of this just for some beard oil? Yeah. 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 Founded in 1977, our quality supplements earned us a strong reputation built on trust and honesty. Building on our heritage, we continually push ourselves to formulate and manufacture the best sports nutrition supplements with billions of packs sold. We're on this journey together, stronger, faster, better, one rep at a time, one set at a time.
one pack at a time. I am Animal. Welcome back to World's Ultimate Strongman here in the beautiful Kingdom of Bahrain. We've had our first two events of our five. And Loz, wow, what, what performances we've seen thus far. It's been really exciting. I mean, the deadlift threw out a few surprises. This event we were expecting, you know, we weren't expecting anything. We just had no idea what athletes would do. Uh, the event was put onto them last minute. An incredible performance from Luke Stoltman to take the win on this event with four reps in a very, very fast time. And I think the guys now, if they ever saw this event again, they'd know, right, I'm going to go and train with gloves. I'm going to work on that speed on the way down. And I think five is possible. Yeah. But it's, it's one of those because it's been thrown at them the first time. It's very, very hard to sort of, you know, be able to predict. And the results are all over the place. Again, in the build-up to this event, our second event, this flag hoist was billed as the mystery event. No one, not the, comp the competitors, not us, only a handful of the organizers knew what this event would be. They hadn't got time to train for it. They found out late last night what it was. They saw the equipment very briefly as they arrived. And indeed, we saw tactics and different approaches throughout the Gloves were worn, gloves weren't worn. One thing we did seem to see is wearing a glove allowed them to lower the weight faster under control and under control is key if they drop the weight that entire rep would not count yep exactly that andy and you know it gave you that slight chance to re release your grip slightly when you're squeezing and squeezing the forearms the, the the tendons in the hands they tire very very quickly and you saw that a couple of guys they managed two reps and it looked quite comfortable that third rep it started to really really affect them andy shepherd here alongside big loz lawrence charlotte Calling the action, and I tell you what, it's a pleasure to be here in Bahrain. It's a beautiful day. It's just gone three o'clock here local time. The heat is a, the heat is a great condition for these guys to compete, Los. Oh, absolutely perfect conditions today, Andy. These guys have got no complaints about the the temperatures they're competing in. They've competed in much hotter and much colder. It's a nice temperature today. A little bit of a breeze. We had a real storm last night, and we were kind of worried about that, but. 
the the weather gods have been good to us. Well, lots the of people jump, on, come down. people jump onto your Instagram. They'll see your penthouse suite. The, the jacuzzi, <laughs> the jacuzzi almost blew over. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was an interesting evening. Lots, can you remind me how many jacuzzis you've got in your room? Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> you can never have enough jacuzzis. That's one thing we've learned here in Bahrain. And no doubt some of these competitors will want a nice long soak after, well, this hard day of competition. Can you talk while I do this? See here, Adam Bishop, a man who until recently had a full-time job as a strength and conditioning coach. Left that job in February to focus full-time on strongman. And more time to train, more time to recover, more time to focus. And some solid performances thus far from Bish. 2021, you hope to be a big year for the big man. Had a great year last year indeed. Can he do the same here and go further and faster in 2021? See JF Coron there. Using all his body weight. You see him getting off the floor to raise the weight. It's 15 meters. They are pulling that weight. It's a long old way. I apologize for that, Andy. I had to do a quick um, PCR test. <laughs> Tell you what, PCR tests are coming thick and fast here. That's, that's one of the things we have to deal with in this day and age. Uh, and I've got to tell you, you know, something Bahrain and indeed World Ultimate Strongman have really pulled out all the stops to make this event happen. Thorough testing, there's isolation, there's certain protocols they've got to go through. A lot of hoops that, and it, this runs for, for so many events, sporting events, that they have to jump through to put these things on, but they, they've done it's, they've done it all to allow this to happen. It's making it as, you know, as safe as possible for us to keep bringing you these events. And you know, it's nice to feel safe ourselves, know the athletes are safe. Mm -hmm and still be able to put these fantastic performances on. So we're just finding out the official scores for you. So first place on the flag hoist, we have Luke Stoltman. Ramin Farjanad coming in second place. Alexei Novikov with another consistent performance, as was JF Karan taking fourth place. Ivers with a much more impressive performance from him there and then the second Iranian Mohammed Estepor good performances from the Iranians Bobby Thompson the winner of the deadlift coming in next then we have Irvin Toots Ethor Tom Stoltman two events now for Tom where he wouldn't have wanted to to place you know he would have been expecting better points from the first two events Shivlikov next Adam Bishop Rob Kearney Konstantin Janasha and then Rauner Heinler, the incredible deadlift performance we saw from him, unfortunately not matched on the flag hoist. Well, Loz, it was my turn for a little PCR test there, I can tell you. That was a... She, she was going into the brain. <laughs> <laughs> Things went past my brain. There's not yeah. a lot of brain to uh, get to, but... I'm still crying from it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> they say big men don't cry, I can tell you. Lauren Charlotte, there's a tear in your eye. <laughs> there certainly is. is. <laughs> well, we're nearly time for our third event here on Strength Island, and it's the giant dumbbell lift for reps. A 100 kilogram dumbbell, 75 seconds. How many reps can our competitors get? And there is a world record holder amongst our field. Alexei Novikov, the current world record holder. 11 repetitions in 75 seconds, I believe. Yep, 75 seconds in this event. So 11 is the marker. Now, I expect Alexei to win this event. The real question is who's going to be coming in second and third. And it's, it's a hard one to predict. You know, people look at someone like Rob Kearney. Everyone knows how impressive his pressing is. But he's coming back from injury. He says it's not a problem because he only uses the one arm on the dumbbell. Rauno's a powerful athlete. Rauno likes the static events. You know, moving around, he's not so keen on. So I expect a much better performance from oh. Rauno on this than we and just here we saw. Go. 75 seconds on the clock. Rauno onto the shoulder. Good drive the legs. Good solid rep there. They must control the dumbbell down. Now, that's open to interpretation. Big Z there. It's just coming away from him ever so slightly as he dips which means he's having to use more tricep strength to, to lock the weight out. When we watch Novikov in a bit, you'll see how explosive he is. He almost doesn't use that tricep. He just uses leg power alone, punches it and catches it locked out. Rauno using a little bit more brute strength there. He's making the reps look solid, but he's slower. His transition on the way down, 
if you want to be competing for the, for the double figures, Whoa. see there, the dumbbell moved away from him as he dipped. The weight now really starting to feel that fatigue in the arms. And that, that's the thing, guys. We, you might think the ones who use their legs a bit more, those big, powerful legs will save the arm. 100%. Everyone thinks of the dumbbell as a shoulder event, but it's actually a full body movement. And you look at the athletes that are exceptionally good at it. They're explosive and athletic. But he's still in this. He's got nine seconds left. Can he get one more of every rep count here? No, he elects not to go through, but a valiant effort there. Was that three? Three repetitions, I think, we'll there for wait Rano. for the official results. But Rano really struggling with the hand and may well have aggravated that hand in the flag hoist. We'll see that how that story plays out. That must have been excruciatingly painful for him. If you go and see his Instagram oh. and you see how bad that hand was, he just has not had enough time to recover. And Lars, we were down here yesterday looking at the equipment, and I can tell you, I, that's 100 kilos. Now, a lot of you watching this may well have deadlifted 100 kilos or more, lifted 100 kilos, but I can tell you the awkwardness of this dumbbell, the thickness of the handle, and the fact, as soon as you pick it up, it's all over the place. The, the control you need just to get that onto the shoulder is incredible. Yeah, it's, it's not like holding onto a normal bar. You know, the thickness of those is, is as thick as a can. And the stability to get the, the weight set on your shoulder correctly all these elements come into it. I'm looking forward to seeing how Rob is looking on this. He's a very explosive athlete. Now, let's remember Rob coming back from a, a really rather vicious tri spin. I, I talked to him. He is using his other arm for this event. It shouldn't play a factor, and he's great at lifting at shoulder press events. Yeah, very explosive, very athletic. He's the American record holder on the log lift. And Janasha is another man coming back from tricep injury. I was, get, again, speaking to, to Janasha beforehand. He is very nervous about this event. Well, of course, look, that tricep injury happened during this exact same movement. How much, perhaps, would that trauma be in the back of his mind? Oh, he's thinking about it. I can absolutely reassure you of that. Once he gets one rep out of the way, he'll feel a little better. But okay. the first one, he's going to be very, very nervous about. Well, here we go. There, we see that. We see that power through the legs. The drive through from Kearney racks up one. Quick to the second. Well, there's Kearney two in looking twelve very seconds. Solid. Remember, you've got to control this. Terry Holland watching very closely. You must control the dumbbell on the way down. Again, there's interpretations to that. And indeed, it seems like Kearney is. So the referee's getting the looking lips. for that arm to be fully locked out under control. Then he'll get the down signal. Rob Kearney looking very solid. Well, Janasha not looking happy. Asking for the time. It's very, very difficult coming back from an injury where you've hurt yourself. That mental aspect is very difficult to get over. And he's going to be thinking, is it going to go again as he presses? You know, it's okay in the gym when you're using lighter weights. But when you get back to that competition environment, you're using the same weights that you did hurt yourself on. I can tell you from experience, it's very, very mentally draining. But you have again. to get yourself over it. Look at that explosion there. through. Beautiful technique there from Rob. Asking for the time. Ten seconds left. Can he get another rep in here? One more rep will be good. He's set nicely. He's got to get it in position. Then punch it overhead. Locked out. Great performance well, there we'll, by Rob Kearney. He'll we'll, be pleased with that. We'll get the official results in just a moment. But Rob may well be pleased with that one. I think Janasha is just glad that one's over. The rest of the events he'll have a bit more confidence in. Well, so many of us would have had an injury before. You may have been running. You may have pulled a hamstring. You know, you may have tweaked something. And when you go back in to do that movement, to do that run, to do that lift where you hurt yourself, there's always something in the back of your mind. And that's what Janasha will have been feeling there. Just to get through that, that movement unscathed will hopefully be a good confidence boost for him. Yeah, just the fact that he's done it now in a competition. Unfortunately, he didn't get a rep then. So he, he will be disappointed and. You know, he said to me, his tricep 70% at the moment. That extra 30% will make a big difference. But the fact that he's been there, he's tested it out. He's got through it without hurting himself. He'll go away, get back into the gym, and hopefully he can build on that confidence. So we have Adam Bishop next. And Adam is up against... I'm not sure. <laughs> I believe it's Shivlikov. Was it Shivlikov? Or Bish. So Bish, to the Bish shoulder. Is pressing is probably his biggest weakness. But Dumbbell, he's quite happy with. You see some Again, drive through the legs there. Yeah, he's a very athletic. You know, he's got a rugby background. Very, very strong in the back. The Dumbbell, you have to get it set right. You can see as it rolls, it's not in position. You can't press until it's set perfectly. 
He's having to use a little tricep there. He would be happier getting a bit more leg power into it. There's two reps for Bish. Let's catch up on and you're right, Shivlikov. Shivlikov then. Unmistakable beret <laughs> of Shivlikov. Nice high elbow. Good solid press. Former Russian Marine, very proud of that. 40 years old now, indeed set a deadlift record for over 40 year olds at Bish. feet of strength Ooh, last Didn't quite year. get that rep there. Just couldn't quite fix it overhead. And it's 100 kilos, Andy. You know, it's 220 pounds. With it's a the... single arm. And again, it's not just the weight. It's the cumbersome hard work of that. And Shivlikov seems to have uh, called the day on his attempt. Ten well, seconds one left. One aspect to think of. You know, guys will have dumbbells to train on in the gym these days. But this is an awkward dumbbell. It's made by two smaller Atlas stones. And it's fused in this metal kind of meshing. So it's a bit harder to set than a perfectly round globe dumbbell. I can add a little lift of it yesterday. And got it off the ground, didn't get much further than that. And it's a, it's a very cumbersome, hard to handle apparatus. But seeing some solid outings thus far. Remember, Alexei Novikov holds the world record, 11 repetitions. And here comes the big man, the albatross, Tom Stoltman. 207 centimeters, 180. 80 I kilos. Think I think he's a little heavier than that right well, now. I mean, he's the, looking massive. The amount we've been eating these last few days, I can tell you, I think we've all put on a few pounds. So, so far, our leader is Rob Kearney, smashing out six repetitions. Then we have three athletes on three repetitions. I will find out if they are taking split timings or whether it's just the repetitions. And Janasha, unfortunately, zero reps. But currently, six reps by Rob Kearney is the target to beat. Well, he thought Inglesunt, quick to the shoulder. How will he go? Looks for the drive. As, then, as soon as he dipped, the dumbbell twisted. Yeah. That was better. Stability is a real problem here. And Stoltman gets it up. No rep from Zadrunas there. He did not get the down rep. You have to have it fixed out under control. That's going to frustrate him. And it's wasted effort. Again, you can see he's, that he's in a better position now. No. no. Zadrunas is not giving him the rep. Tough day for Tom Stoltman. Ito Ingolson. Continuing to... Ingleson to looking like he's getting his best performance of the day so far. Oh, oh no. I think... Did, did Terry give him that or not? Don't believe so. I think he may be on three reps at the moment. L final 30 seconds of the 75. He's got that dumbbell up again. Look how high he's got his elbow. That's a good position. Now he needs to drive hard with the legs. Really punch that dumbbell into the air. Try and get his shoulder close to his ear. No, oh, it's no. coming away from him now. Once you fatigue, it gets, I mean, it's 100 kilos, Andy. It's not a lightweight. It, it, it really fatigues the athletes quickly. It's one thing getting the weight up. It's another thing to be able to keep stability in something as, as unstable as two Atlas stones welded together. We need to see what the official result there was because I'm not sure if Zadronas gave Tom those reps or not. He may not have. We'll find out from the official result, but if he hasn't, Tom Stoltman will be bitterly disappointed. Zadronas is a strict referee as well, you know, especially when it comes to overhead events because he was such a renowned overhead lifter. Well, from one man having a great day to a man who's had a fantastic day thus far in Bobby Thompson, standout performance in the Axel Deathlift that opened up today. We're now in our third of five events. Ethor with four repetitions. That's puts him in second place. Rob Kearney is still in the lead with six. Still to come. Alexei Novikov sets the world record of 11 repetitions. Irvin Toots makes his way to the platform. Bobby's had a great day so far, and he's built for this type of event. I think if there's an event here he would have favoured, it would be the dumbbell. So I'm expecting a big performance. Terry Holland's watching over as Bobby Thompson starts his 75 seconds. Good solid rep there by Bobby. Nice controlled on the way down. Irving gets his first rep as well. Great drive from the legs there, full extension. I think Irving gets his next rep as well. Yeah, Bobby Thompson just in the lead here. Goes again. Another good rep there by Bobby. And neither of these guys rushing. They're being methodical, making sure of each repetition. They know that six repetitions is going to get them good points. Well, beautiful left there from Toots as we enter the final 30 seconds of our 75. You can see both of these guys 
only using the one arm. They've got the, the elbow sleeve on the arm that they're going to use. Some guys can use both, but for most of the athletes, they will go with their dominant arm. You do get those rare athletes that can you know, use both, and sometimes that can save some energy. Well, Irving Toos has destroyed the platform there as Bobby goes for five seconds left. Can he rack up another one? And he gets the down signal from Terry Hollins. Well, what a performance there once again. Bobby is he's flying today. Absolutely fantastic performance once again from the American Bobby Thompson. It's been a long way for Bobby Thompson to get here from the United States, but it's worth the trip because he is having a standout performance here today on Strength Island. Yeah, I've been very, very impressed with Bobby. The official result there, six repetitions wow. for Bobby, tying with the other American, Rob Kearney. The Americans are joint first right now. Irvin Toots coming in with four repetitions. Currently, that puts him in joint second with Ethor from Iceland. Getting set for up. Is this an Iranian Next battle eight. here? Now we off we go. Estepor there. The Iranians, they love their overhead lifting. Some brilliant Olympic lifters from Iran. We saw Estepor earlier today really putting everything into the deadlift. And there, Ivers there. Nice solid rep from him. The Latvian, very, very good all round strong man. He's really made steady progress over the last few years. Not stand out in anything, but a good, solid performer. He's this always is, consistent. This is what you talked about, Lodge. It doesn't have to be the best at anything, as long as you are consistently good at everything. And he's quick on these. Look at the explosiveness. He's punching it overhead, catching it, straight back down, and he's back up again. He needs to be and careful about way get dropping that weight, though. He doesn't want to lose a rep because he's not controlling it. He's okay at the moment. He's off the platform. But he's being effective. There we go, another rep. Good, solid rep there from the Iranian. He's got 15 seconds left. There's enough time for one more. Can Ivers get this? Oh, oh, yes! Does he get the down signal? Powers through. We'll see if he gets it. <laughs> he's finished there. 75 seconds over, but again. Fantastic performance there from Ivers. Each and every one of these strongmen have come here to compete on Strength Island. Some fantastic performances thus far. What a way to kick off 2021. It's really been a, a surprising and exciting show so far, Andy. There's no, you know, some of the big heavy favourites aren't performing as well as we might have expected. Some of the guys we weren't talking about performing... Ivers going into the lead there with eight wow. repetitions. But we talk about great performances. The world record holder at this event, last year's strongest man in the world, Alexei Novikov, steps onto the platform. His world record set last year is 11 repetitions. He's going up head-to-head -head with the legend, J.F. Curran. Now, do you think he's going to go all out to try and break his record, or is he going to get nine reps and stop? Depends how much he wants to conserve for He's later in the day. Is today the day for a world record? Well, we're about to find out. We are 75 seconds away. Well, Alexi, ask him for a drink. Perhaps he is going to go for a world record. Doesn't want to leave any stone unturned here. He's, well, he's still got another group to come out after him. So, you know, there's no guarantee with anything. I'm sure he's going to give 100%. Watch how efficient he is, though, with his pressing. Eight he will punch that beat. weight overhead. JF has improved his dumbbell. Much stronger than he was a few years ago. He'll be looking for big points, but this is all about Alexei Novikov. And you see how much that, that dumbbell bounces look how hits the floor. Look efficient that is. You see, he makes you, it look effortless, Andy. Look. <laughs> you can see why he's the world record holder. And 2020, the strongest man in the world with ease. He's quick in the transition. There's no wasting time. Dumbbell goes up, brings it down in front of him, and then he's straight back in. Well, Coron going well, but as we said, he's up against a, the best in the world at this event in Alexei Novikov. Look at, the, look at the momentum. Look at the way he gets that dumbbell onto his shoulder. There's no wasted motion. He's very, very efficient. A well-trained athlete. He's like a well-oiled machine. There's only one man in the world, I think, that has a chance against him. Unfortunately, injured right now is um, 
the, the unfortunately injured Polish sensation, Mateusz Kiliuszkowski, the world record holder for one rep. But this is the man when it comes to repetitions. Well, we'll, get, we'll wait for the, the official confirmation on, on the reps. Final couple of seconds here. Well, Jeff Caron doesn't quite get that final one in. Now, we're going to wait for the official results here. But what we do know is Alexei Novikov was smooth, he was sharp, and he was in form. Yeah, but you could really tell how clean and efficient each rep was. JF with a very solid performance there. Again, putting in consistent performances. Again, that's important for the overall. But Novikov was the heavy favorite on that event beforehand. I think he's just asking if he's number one. I'm pretty sure well, he the is. The official Will. results are making their way to us. And it's 10. 10 repetitions for the world record holder, Alexei Novikov. His world record of 11 stands in place. But what a performance here in the middle of Strength Island. And a very solid performance as well by JF. Seven repetitions. He'll be very pleased with that. Consistent performance, but 10 reps by Novikov. Unbelievable. Well, we'll see if anyone can uh, can come close to that second place. Currently lying at eight repetitions. So we've got Luke Stoltman up now. Really impressive performance in the flag hoist. Luke is one of the best log lifters on the planet. When it comes to heavyweight overhead, he's unbelievable. Well, dry look at that power. Makes that look easy now. It's all about smooth, sharp, efficient work here. Another easy rep there by Luke. You can see the press is no issue for him. He's just a little bit slower in the whole transition. Well, Luke Stockman's legs are quite literally the size <laughs> of tree trunks, and he's using those to his advantage here. Massive leg power, huge tricep and shoulder power. The Iranian as well doing very well. Yeah, they call Luke Stockman the Highland Oak for a reason. He, he walks on two of them. Just positioning just the weight that's so hard to keep it in place. You see there the metal meshing. It's hard to get it set right. You really need to kind of have it in the right place before you try and press. Otherwise, it will just roll off your shoulder. And again, that energy is wasted. It's 100 kilos with one arm pressed into the sky, keeping it stable. All that pressure Ram on the wrist there, there. Putting another solid performance in. Final few seconds here. We may be done in this heat. I think but there's no time for one more. Again, we'll wait for the official confirmation there. But Luke Stoltman raises the arm. He's happy with that. We'll be back in just a few moments with more action here from Bahrain and world's ultimate strongman. I'm not sure how many they got them. We started with a can, added 200, no 250, no 300 milligrams of natural caffeine, extracted from plants. Yeah, plants. So you could do this, but not this. Vitamins B3, B6, B12, you're welcome. BCAAs, that just happened. Plus electrolytes, because sweat, and CoQ10, because we had room. And then we made it taste good, without the sugar. Now, go drink it. That's how we made rain, total, body, fuel.
Welcome back to World Ultimate Strongman Strength Island. We are in the beautiful Kingdom of Bahrain. It's a warm, balmy, but I tell you what, it's windy here at the World Ultimate Strongman's Arena. We've had some fantastic performances here thus far. Three events down, two to go. Yeah, it's been an exciting competition so far, and it's really starting to take place now, take shape now. Uh, very, very solid, consistent performances from this man on screen right now, Novikov. He's performing incredibly well. JF Karan performing very consistently as well. And Bobby Thompson, the dark horse, really, really stepping up his performance this year. Luke also. Luke, after a bad start, which he would have expected, really starting to make his charge for the title. Second place in the last World Ultimate Strongman contest. He'd love to go one better than that today. Some real surprises thus far. Andy Shepard here alongside Big Loz, Lauren Charlotte. A pleasure to be calling this action as the strongest men quite literally in the world come together for the first time this year. It was a, a testing year last year as well. <laughs> we all know, but looking to restart the world of strongman with his first major international competition of the year. And we see there Rob Kearney coming into this competition on three weeks' notice, coming back from a devastating tricep injury. You'd be happy to know it was his other arm he hurt, not the one he was using here in the dumbbell press. Another man there who coming back from tricep injury, unfortunately, it's affected his strong tricep. And he's just not ready for that weight yet, but it's good to see him competing. I'm so excited, Andy, that we are having a live event. It's, with all the events that happened last year, it was great seeing the guys doing the feats of strength, but to be at a contest, the guys going head to head, who is the best on the day with the same equipment, that's what competition is all about. Of course, last year, World's Ultimate Strongman. This event started in 2018, had a great event in 2019, and last year pulled out all the stops to keep the world of strongman going with their feats of strength. These athletes took part in their own gyms, are kind of against each other, but virtually, in a sense. And as you say, Lars, it's so good now to have this event. And although we, we haven't got the crowds we wish we could invite back, it's so fantastic to have this head-to-head -head competition for these competitors to come back to doing what they love, to being in one place, competing face-to-face, -face, head head-to-head, lift for lift. And we are here. We have the privilege of calling the action live in Bahrain. Who surprised you the most so far today? Who, who have you really been impressed with? I've got, I've got to, well, surprising. I've got to say Tom Stoltman, but not in the best way. He's such a talented individual. There's no denying how good he is. But just today hasn't been his day. We're going to see these next two events. We know how quick he is. We know he is the king of the stones. He ho holds the world record in the Atlas Stones. So you've got to make him the favorite in that event. Can he come back? Can he, can he make an impact in this competition in these final two events? He can certainly make an impact. I, honestly, I think he's lost too many points now to be a challenge for the title. Novikov will have really stretched ahead. JF's been very consistent. Those guys don't drop points. So for Tom to win now, unfortunately, I just can't see, see that being the case. But he's going to want to make sure he proves that he is one of the best guys here. He's got two events that he could potentially win now in the loading and the Atlas Stones. He's got to brush off those negative performances. Yes, he would have wanted to do better, but that's competition as an athlete. It doesn't always go your way. He'll be disappointed with what he's done already, but he has to be able to block that out, move on, have a, a blistering performance now on the loading, and then prove why we talk about him so positively on the Stones and smash that. There's 30 points for him to win. He can certainly climb up that table, fight for the prize money, and obviously build towards f events that are coming up later in the year. And th there's no denying his ability. Absolutely not. Uh, last year, you know, he was only second to Lexi Nozokov in terms of the strongest men in the world. He has everything. If you were advising him backstage right now as he gets set for these final two events, what would you be telling Tom to do? I'd just be telling him to focus on the next event. There's no point in even thinking about what's happened today. You know, you'll address what's gone wrong when you get home. But right now, he's got to be thinking about the loading. That's the next event, and that's all he should be focusing on, getting himself ready, mentally in the zone, really trying to G himself up for a big performance. There's no need to think of anything else. Well, we are heading towards our next event, and it's, uh, it's going to be a quick one. It's the carry and load, head-to-head. 
There are three implements. We've got a tire that weighs 100 kilos. They're going to they're gonna move that 50 meters. Then we've got an Atlas stone that's 100 kilos. 120, 120 the Atlas 120, stone. sorry. That's going to be carried 10 meters. And then a shield that's 140 kilograms. And it's an awkward shape. Again, this is not like carrying 140 kilos on a deadlift bar and walking this through is, the gym. This is typical strongman. It's not the heaviest... You know, you can see guys lifting a lot more in the gym than these weights, but these are awkward, difficult objects to deal with. And Loz, you and I were down here yesterday. Yes, it was a hot day, but today is not exactly a, a chilly. It's 20 plus degrees. And that shield conducts the heat incredibly. I haven't had a chance to touch it today. I don't know how it is, but I've got to think it's going to be warm. It will be. It's, it's, it's going to be hot, but these are tough guys, you know. They don't let a little burn affect them. What are you trying to say about me, Ross? <laughs> what are you trying to say about me? I can't take the heat? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, that tire, I think, is a little heavier than 100. They say in 100. I picked it up yesterday. It felt pretty heavy. And then the Atlas Stone, they're not allowed any tacky on that. And they're quite slick stones. Mm. So mm. it would be very easy for someone to slip. This event is going to be very, very difficult to predict. We've um, got some great guys at loading. But the, with the different implements, it's always awkward objects. One mistake can cost you, and it's going to be blisteringly quick. Well, here we, we go. Janasha. First competitor, 100 kilo. Up oh. to the shoulder. Ah, there we go. He's moving well now. And 15 meters is a long way to go. It is when you're carrying a 100 so kilogram tire. tire. under, and then the next two objects go on top. Well, they're, they're literally loading it. So seeing how they cope with this stone without any tacky, easy for Janasha. 120 up to the chest. Little slower with this one. It's cumbersome. I think it's quicker than you could go, Andy. Well, I don't, I don't know. I, was, uh, I mean, yeah, you're hundred percent right. Look and this shield is very awkward as well. It's very wide. So look, I mean, Janash is a very tall man, big wingspan, but he's not able to get around it easily. It's, a, it's an awkward shape. Trying to get a purchase on it. Now he's trying to figure out how to put it up there. Yeah. It's really how you engage that first. If he's adjusting his grip, trying to get underneath it to get it high. That platform is very high. They've got to get it onto it again. He's just catching it there. These are seconds oh, tipping away and he's dropped that's, it. That's bad. Now, if that's flat on the floor, that could be end of the day for him because it can be so hard right. to lift back up. And, and he's called it a day. And this is the great thing about these carrying loads. You can pick the weight up. You can move the weight. But it's one small mistake. One small error can be so, so costly. Yeah, we've, we've spoken about that already today. And, I mean, I was saying just before that this event, you know, it could be blisteringly quick, but one mistake can cost you. And that's happened there. Janasha will not be happy. If that was a keg, he would have loaded that so easily. He would have just rolled it up his body. But the awkwardness of that shield that he's not used to touching, very, very difficult object. And you can see then he just couldn't get in the right hand position to lift it up onto the platform. Yeah. Again, 140 kilos. These guys can lift that way all day long. But in the format that that shield is... It's so difficult to find the right grip. We saw Janash there. He got it up. He went for his walk with it, but it wasn't high enough. He didn't get underneath it. And this is where the athletes need to consider what they're doing at the time of pickup to allow themselves to maximize their moment at the end. This is where guys like Novikov impressed me so much. You, you know, I saw him looking at every bit of implement and kit that we, we have beforehand. He's mentally preparing and figuring out the best way for him to do something. I think Janasha, unfortunately, there. Disappointed. He's going to be disappointed. Well, here comes the big man, the Albatross. Six foot eight, Tom Stortman. He hasn't had the day he would have wished for thus far. Can he get himself back into this contest? It's definitely time for Tom to step it up now. He's perfectly built for this. He's got the long wingspan that can wrap around that shield. He has the height to put the, pl the implements onto the platform easily. And he's... Strong and athletic. Well, he we... has to be trying to win this event. Well, Mikhail Shivlokov going head to head. And Tom's off and ready as Shivlokov gets the tire onto his shoulder. 15 meters with 100 kilos. And I'm telling you, that, that is heavier than 100 kilos. These guys, I see them throw up 100 much easier than that. Shivlokov is a strong man. Oh, Tom, Tom well, already running through with the stone. Loaded quickly. There we go. And Tom needs to sprint back. Doesn't want to make a mistake here. Shivlokov looking to get that 120 kilo Atlas stone up. It shows the effort of this event. You know, he's struggling there. Well, look at Tom, Tom. now. Tom's he's got up high. He can dump this on the platform. He's got that height. And it's six foot. There we go. There we go. That's a performance that we wanted to see from Tom Stoltman. Uh, hopefully that can kind of really 
ignite the flame inside him, yeah. get himself going. He's been flat today. You haven't seen the cheering, the, you know, the, the determination that you normally see yeah, from Tom. Shivlikov, we're just finishing off here. The, the shield is low, as we saw with Janasha. He's now got to get it up onto that platform. How high is that platform, Loz? It looks pretty high. It's well above waist height for these guys. Oh, They're just trying to throw it up, and that's just not smart tactics. You know, obviously, Tom's got that height, but he got it high enough. He lifted it over. It is a very, very awkward object. And Mikhail Shivlikov, six foot one. He'll need to get that Leave well up there. onto his chest. And he said no. He said no to it. So already the guys watching now will be thinking, just finish this, you know. And that, again, changes tactics. You can save a bit of energy on some of the earlier events or, or earlier implements to, to, to make sure there's enough left for that shield. Because sometimes if you go flat out, you just burn up that energy quickly. And that's the tactics that the guy's using. And it's the difference between being in a competition environment and, say, just doing a one-off thing at home. And it seems that if the, if the competitors have been watching, it's really paying attention to how they're lifting that final implement, the shield. There's 140 kills. They've got to get it high to give themselves a chance to get it onto the loading platform. So Tom Stoltman, the only man to finish so far in 41 seconds. Wow. That is the time to beat. Janasha doing two in 27.78. Mikhail Shivaklov two in 38.44. 41 seconds is swift. Now, Ranjo Heinler, a man who's had some real difficulties with his hand, how will that manifest in this? The, the shield could once again be a struggle, particularly if he has damaged his hand further in the rope pull earlier. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't see this being a good event for Rano. The hand is damaged. He's a shorter man. I think that height and that wingspan help massively when it comes to the shield. Tyre shouldn't be a problem for him. I'm sure he'll be fine on the stone. He'll be hoping he can finish the event. That will be his tactic now. I don't think he'll go like a, a bat out of hell on the first two. I think he'll just want to make sure he can get them all done. Well, someone who will be looking to pull out all the stops is uh, Adam Bishop. Again, a man who had a fantastic year last year with all the hurdles everyone had to jump through. Great year in 2020. He'll want to make a fantastic start here in 2021. And here we go. Adam is a very, very athletic man. Good at medleys normally. This was an event that he smashed a number of times in competition before. Rauno has gone well ahead, but the tyre is already he's just ahead at the moment. And look at Rauno. Really look at the pick up the pace. He knows that time is of I the think essence. Right. I think he's going for those fast two to make sure he beats some of the other guys. You can see the hand slipping there he's, on that stone. He's wearing gloves. It's an interesting tactic on the stone. Well, he's got it up. Gloves. This is a great performance from Rauno. He is doing very, very well, actually. Very quick on those first two. Bish has got it up and now he runs back for this shield. How can Ranyo negotiate this shield? Can he get it high enough? He's surprising me on this. He's putting in a solid performance. Oh, oh so close, but it goes down. And that's the issue now. Well, Bish. Adam doesn't look in a solid it's position. Low. He needs to adjust his hands. He needs to get underneath it as Ranyo looks to hoist it up. And again, he drops it. That's going to be so disheartening. And Bish has got it on the floor as well. And this shows you how impressive Tom was to, to put it up so easily, relatively easily. Because these are strong guys, big strong guys. And look how much they're struggling with this awkward implement. It's so cumbersome. 140 kilos. You can't get a purchase on it. But Bish is continuing to try and get it up. You've really got to think about how you're grasping it to give yourself the best opportunity to get it onto yep. that super and high I mean, platform. I'm looking at myself and thinking, what is the best way to do it? It's so awkward. Unless you have those really long arms, it's just a very, very difficult right. bit of kit. I think Adam was expecting to be able to do all three. He saved his pace on the, on the first two. Well, look, more action coming up here on World's Ultimate Strongman Strength Island. A lot of people ask, hey Tu, how do you get the belt that looks more beautiful than most women in the world? Well, I'll give you a hint. I don't use my enemy's blood to land on it. No, not even the cow's milk. First harvest. I use something very unique that I found on the Bear Doyle from the Can you imagine? 
how many lives I would have spared if I just found this sooner. Founded in 1977, our quality supplements earned us a strong reputation built on trust and honesty. Building on our heritage, we continually push ourselves to formulate and manufacture the best sports nutrition supplements with billions of packs sold. We're on this journey together, stronger, faster, better. One rep at a time, one set at a time, one pack at a time. I am Animal. Back to World Ultimate Strongman. You are looking at the beautiful Bahrain. It's been our host city for several days now as competitors from all across the globe have traveled here to take part in this first major international strongman event of the year. Water. <clears throat> you are looking at the beautiful city of Bahrain. This is world's ultimate strongman strength island. Andy Shepard here calling the action alongside two time Britain's strongest man, Big Loz. Lauren, Charlie and Loz, what a few days it's been here for all the competitors on Strength Island. It's been incredible. The athletes have been looked after so well. You know, all of us have been really welcomed by the country. They're excited to see these strong men. It's really nice to see the sport growing, getting bigger and bigger. These athletes putting the work in, these performances that they put in. And so far, we've had an exciting first three events. And it's been, it's been unpredictable, Loz. Some, some standout performances from competitors we may well not have been expecting them from. 100%. It was always going to be a tough contest to predict. There's so many variables with this event. The athletes are all so close in ability. It's all about who comes in in shape. You know, and there's, there's been some fantastic performances. Bobby Thompson has very much impressed me. Well, we're in the midst of the carry and load. Three and we've got huge Ethel. implements. 100 kilogram tie, got to carry him 50 meters. Then 120 kilo Atlas stone for 10 meters. And then the cumbersome shield for five meters. And it's Ethel Inglesson. Quick start here. Irvin Toots just behind. He'll want to be quick on this stone. We can see now from the results that have come in, just a fast two is going to be good points. And the deciding factor on this really is the shield. Who can get it up high enough to get it onto that? Look how high that platform is. 
It's interesting looking at the tactics. Now I'd be thinking, if I was competing, I'd be trying to just get too fast. Yeah, he thought Inglis only, he's, he's over six foot tall, but he's going to have to get that almost onto his shoulder to have a chance of getting on. And look, well, he almost has. got it high. This is the way to do it. He needs to be able to keep it this high. And yes, he's done and it. And he's done it. That is going to be a good performance here as Irving Toots looks to follow up, but he hasn't got the shield high enough and he's struggling. That was the tactics there by Ethor. He got it really high on the initial pickup. So he could just run the shield in, dump it straight onto the platform. Irvin is working hard to get this. He's using the lip of the, the platform. He's got it up, slides there we it on. Go. And he finishes as well. The first heat to have both men finishing. You saw some great technique there from Ethor Ingolson. He'd really been paying attention. He knew what he had to do. And that was get the shield high. Just getting that third implement onto the platform places him in some great great positioning that was a great performance there by Ethel. he'll be really pleased and picking up some big points we'll wait for the official result but that's going to really do some uh, some good for the positioning of the Icelandic athlete getting set for our next heat here and I don't envy the job of a the crew having to drag these huge implements back into positioning. They're certainly getting a workout here. That is without question the hardest job at a contest, is resetting all the equipment. Look at this. This was a fantastic performance. Ethor, not the tallest guy in the competition. Very, very quick on the first two implements. And most importantly, getting that shield high enough so he could load it on at the end. And this is the thing about strongman. It's not just about how strong you are. You've got to use your, your mind. You've got to use tactics. And Ethel Ingleson really paid attention and adjusted. Ethel there got, gets himself into second place. Irvin Toots in third. Standout competitor thus far is Tom Stoltman. The Albatross, 41 seconds for all three implements. But Ethel Ingleson, well, if he stays in second place, he'll be happy with that. Very. That's a, a that's big, big points for Ethel there. He'll be very pleased with that performance. Next competitors just getting set. And I think we have both Iranians coming out. Mohamed Estepour there. New athlete from Iran. Very, very strong shoulders. Great performance there on the dumbbell. Let's see what his moving's like now and how he is at coping with awkward objects. And there's Farjanard as well. Ramin Farjanard. He's been here before. He proved he belonged at this level at the last World Ultimate Strongman event. Here we go. And most importantly, they'll both want to beat each other. Being you know, both Iranian athletes, you always want to beat your countrymen. This is all about time. Look at this. They're running fast with this tire. Fast feet. You've got to load it in there under Straight the platform. In there. Make and sure. And then they're going to sprint back. Certainly move quick for that. big He's men. Very, very good with the Atlas Stone. Look oh, at this. Not a motion on his face. He's, he hoists 120 kilos onto the platform. This is fast, Andy. Now. Marginard gets it up as well. But now it's that deciding factor. This awkward shield. They've got and to get it this. high. This is impressive. It's impressive. But is that shield high enough? Can he get it? Can he negotiate it onto this? High Ooh, platform. Oh, it's just not going quite enough. He's got to work it up. But oh, there we go. Done he's it. done it. I need to see the time of this. That was very, very fast. And Farshad, I'd look at the follow-up here. Needs to be careful. Doesn't want to make a mistake. He's going to use the lip of the, the platform. Oh, uh, it's come off. 140 kilo. And it's a cumbersome. He's using the tire way. there to stop it falling. Good tactics. Does he get away with it? He does. Well, <laughs> a little <laughs> nod there. <laughs> He's got a nice wry smile on his face. Uh, you gotta he knows use, you, you gotta, got a little lucky then. You've got to use your environment to your advantage. And yeah. that's what he did. Good performance then from both of the Iranians. What a competition. This Estepor has been. there was very, very impressive. Just the speed that he, he transitioned onto the, the Atlas Stone. You've got to remember they're not using any tacky, so their hands don't stick. And he just looked rock solid. What a poker face. Farjanad there with the stone. It's a 120 kilo Atlas stone yes. covering 10 meters with it. Interesting belt he's got going on there. <laughs> you know? He's a white belt in strongman. Well, I think at this level, he's far greater than a white belt. This guy, Mohamed Estepoy, he's impressed me at this contest. I have never seen him before. 
Very, very solid performance. I don't want to play poker with him. He He's was only two seconds slower than Tom Stockman oh on this 43 event. 43.3 seconds. Tom Stockman still in the lead with 41 seconds. But what? What a performance from a straw man looking to make his name here on the international scene. And he's certainly doing that with that performance. Very, very impressive performance today. These Iranians are definitely getting stronger and stronger. Next Rob heat. Kearney against Luke Stoltman now. Luke is normally very, very fast at loading events. Well, remember his brother holds the lead right now. Speed. Stoltman is sprinting. He's going to sprint back. He needs to be quick on this Atlas Stone. Of, of Luke, again, is like he's underrated on the stones because Tom is so good. But Luke can manhandle stones very easily. Here's Rob Kearney. Last year voted the strongest man pound for pound in the world, trying to hoist it up. But it's Luke Storm against that Atlas Tom Stone on. Shield. And look at the look at the look at the interesting technique there from Rob. That is interesting. On the shoulder. Again, he knows he's got to get these implements high to get it on. He's not the tallest man, Rob. And look at him. He's getting it high on his chest. This is the way to do it. He can dump it straight onto the platform. He's going to be close in terms of Oh, and he's times. done it. We'll oh, wait for the time, but the Oak has done all three. Stoltman's really do rule the roost on these lifting events. Lift and carry, sorry. Unfortunately, Rob is not a tall man. His wingspan is much, much shorter than the likes of Luke or Tom. You can see he's trying to turn the shield sideways to, yep. to make it thinner. Remember, he's coming back from a devastating tricep injury. He doesn't want to re-injure himself trying to negotiate that awkward, awkward shield. That was a very, very good performance there by Luke Stockman. Great. After that deadlift, he has been flying in this contest. Great sound of sportsmanship there. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, well, the power belly. The he power did. belly we've talked about. It came in use there. He got that shield up on his chest. That is making a big difference. The guys that seem to be able to get it high enough on the pickup they're not wasting the energy trying to play around with it as they get closer to the platform. Great sign of sportsmanship there and embrace from Stockman and Kearney. This is the thing about Stroman. It's a real community. All these competitors are facing off. But I tell you what, around the hotel, they're all friends. They've all been hanging out. And we look at this. Luke Stockman, 48.24 seconds. That places him in third. Behind his brother and behind Mohamed Estepal. Yeah. So... Tom Stoltman still in the lead in this event as JF Curran looks to step up to the plate. Now, if JF really wants to battle to, to win this contest, he needs a win here. He needs to place ahead. But how about this guy? Perhaps the performances of the day. Bobby Thompson, relatively new to the pro game, really has pulled out all the stops here on Strength Island. Now, Bobby said he likes the static event. This event is more about moving. If he can perform, this is the event that will decide whether Bobby's fighting for that podium Let's position. Let's see what Bobby Thompson can bring this to the event. He's quick, he's up, but as is Koran. They're both fast with Fi the tyre. 100 kilos, 15 metres. The tyre is just there to annoy them, but all these athletes can manage this no problem. It's just there to add a little fatigue before they move on to the next objects. And Koran hoists that 120 kilo Atlas Stone up onto his chest. You've got to keep it high. Bobby Thompson, though, you can see it's a low Atlas stone there. He's going to struggle to get that up, and indeed, he it's drops down it. Down with the stone, and this could cost him big, big points now. He needs to put this up quickly. And Karan, that shield looks high. Can he, get, can he load it? Oh, he oh! tried to... Oh! He just tried to throw a 140 kilo sheet onto the platform. It didn't pay off, but he's quick to get it back up. The energy wasted now. This could be a disastrous oh, he, he manages to do it but that will have cost him points you can see the disappointment he's annoyed himself but look at Bobby this Bobby Thompson he's wasting energy now has he got enough time to get this up he needs it to get those points to be in a position to challenge going into the Atlas Stones but it's he needs low. to muster every bit of strength he's got he's trying to get low he needs that other arm under to get it high enough come on Bobby push it on Oh, 140 kilos Such once again. Such a big, big effort by Bobby there. Must be so disheartening to get it so, so high and then just by millimetres you miss it. When you push yourself that hard to get so close and then it doesn't go on, it's so mentally draining. The Bobby Thompson, regardless of that performance, we see how he does in the, the final event, the Atlas Stones, but you would hope he would walk away happy from this event after some, some stunning performances thus far today. It's been some fantastic performances, but both of these guys 
I said before that event, if they want to be challenging Novikov, when it comes to the stones, they needed to perform there. Unfortunately, both haven't. Novikov knows what he needs to be. He doesn't need to worry about Tom Stoltman. Tom's too far back now to challenge for the title. He knows he needs to beat these two men, maybe beat the Iranians, and he's going to be going into the stones in an almost unassailable position. Such an effort there by Bobby. You could tell he's struggling with these implements. He gave it everything. Caron was moving well. He was on for a good time. He was almost a little bit casual with that last implement. Well, here we go. A real breakout start last year in the world of strong one, Alexei Novikov. And he walks around. In a, he's got a real aura of confidence the way he walks around, doesn't he? I he knows he's not the biggest, but he believes he's the he best. He's so athletic and naturally gifted. Both these men are fast. This could be a quick one. Brace yourself. They'll both be thinking no mistakes. They know no mistakes and they'll score big points. It's Moxellis first onto the shoulder and he... But look at this. Look, look at how, how fa fast they are. They're really moving. There's no wasting time. They want a quick first neck two. Neck. But Alexi, really quick back to the Atlas stone. Gets the stone nice and high. That's important. You don't want to have to lift it again as you get close to the platform. Go no. straight up. Well, neck and neck thus far, but... And now Alexei just needs to make sure he gets this set right. If he gets it set right at the pickup, then he doesn't need to waste time. Look at this. This was the technique, and he's got it high. He's going to flip it onto the platform. He needs to make sure and do nothing silly. Well, look at the angle he's coming in from. Look oh, at that. Wow. Oof. That Unbelievable. was quick. And Smokselis, he gets Another all three. That's an achievement in itself. Wow, what performance is here at World's Ultimate Strongman. to the most tropical island with the most tropical flavor not that kind of flavor that kind then add a floral punch of lychee slammed into a tangy burst of lilac corn give it zero sugar but still make it taste good paradise people. then pack it with power so you can out do you that's what goes into new rain lilac corn lychee a total body fuel
What a day it's been here at World's Ultimate Strongman Strength Island. Andy Shepard here calling the axle alongside Big Loz, Lawrence Charlet, and Loz, some surprising performances thus far. Uh, it's been an incredible show so far. A lot of surprising performances, but the one man who's proving to be the most consistent of the day, Alexei Novikov. I've just got his official time from the first event, uh, from the fourth event, the loading there. 40.11 seconds. Wow. Taking first place again. That's two events in a row. I don't believe he's been outside the top few on any of the events. He's going into the stones well ahead of everyone else. The battle now is all for second and third place. Indeed, Tom Stortman took second, just over a second slower than Novikov. Hadn't had a great event thus far, but he's really pulled himself back into the mix. Too much to do in this final event, but we do know that Tom Stoltman is king of the stones. Can he pull out a spectacular performance to close out today? Tom will 100% want to win the stones. It means a lot to him having that title of king of the stones. He won't be letting Alexei Novikov win that event. But the big battle now is podium positions. There's still big points to fight for. The positioning keeps changing. We're just waiting now for the overall results going into the stones. As soon as we have that, we will bring it to you guys. We saw Luke Stoltman there just rubbing his belly. The power belly came into play for him. He had a great performance in this event. And Bobby Thompson here, really impressed in the first few events. They really stood out. A strong one only really entered the, the pro ranks last year. And JF Cron also, great performance in this carry and load. And look, this is a, an event, this is the first major strongman event of 2021. All these competitors really want to draw a line in, a, in the sand as to where they are. This could really set the tone for some of these guys going forward. This, this is a huge event, so and it's, it's the first event of the year. Everyone wants to win it. You want to put the foot down and prove you're the best guy in the world. Obviously, last year, there wasn't as many competitions as normal. Alexei Novikov proving why he's been so successful these last, you know, last year, particularly the last couple of years but he's getting better every time we see him. 24 years old, and last year he was the strongest man in the world. And he's not the biggest man, far from it, but he's a real example of how hard work and athleticism and smart really pay off in, in this really intriguing world of strongman. The key thing you said there, Andy, is smart. He is very, very clever, working things out, figuring out the best, most effective. Look at this. He runs around the side of it to go on the smallest point of the platform. Worst case scenario, he just gets it over the lip and he can kind of slide it on. At six foot tall, he's one of the smaller men in this competition, but he loaded that shield probably. The only probably the person who made it easier was the six foot nine Tom Stoltman. Yeah, and he still managed to beat Tom in terms of time. So, very, very impressive performance. Alexei Novikov looking to start off 2020 as he finished, sorry, 2021 as he finished 2020. And here's Irvin Toots. Irvin. He's had a steady performance today. Ethel really proving that he deserves to be here. A lot of people saying, like, a lot of people said that Ethel doesn't deserve to be in this show. Well, look, this performance alone should change people's mind. Again, he showed quickness and he showed smart. And uh, as you said, Loz, that's what you need here. It's not about, oh, how much can you lift? It's when about you look, how you When do you it. look at the most successful strongmen of all time, they f they're the ones that can figure things out quickly. You look at Brian Shaw's, the Zydrunas Aviskas's, the Marius Pujanovskis, the Magnus Ver Magnussons. They figure things out. They, it's not just about static strength. Yes, you need to be stupidly strong. You need to have a massive deadlift. You need to have a massive press, but you've got to be able to do everything. It's how you utilize your strength. It's, as you said, Lars, it's not just static strength. It's not your, how big is your deadlift. These are tires. These are shields. These are awkward. To, I mean, I had a go at lifting an Atlas stone the other day and 100 kilos, I can tell you right now, felt like you're trying to move 200 kilos. Just the That was fun watching you suffer with it. Thanks, I quite enjoyed thank, it. Thanks for cheering me on, Loz. <laughs> I, I appreciated every moment of that. And I gotta say, that 100 kilos felt like double the weight. Just the, the, the position you're in. So if you go to the gym, if you lift weights, it's, it, these implements add so much difficulty to each and every movement. Well, for anyone that's did deadlifted 100 kilos in the gym, it's not particularly that hard. You know, most, most, well, grown, speak for yourself, most grown men can deadlift 100 kilos. But you try and lift an Atlas stone that's 100 kilos where there's no handle to hold on to. It's a slippy, round globe. It tears your forearms up. It's just like a dead weight. Yeah. 100 kilos on an Atlas stone is like a, a 250 kilo deadlift. Yeah. Yeah. Rob Kearney 
Good to see Rob competing again. Such a charismatic character. He's done so much for strong man. Pound for pound, strongest man in the world. He was voted that last year. Coming back from a, a really rather vicious tricep injury. He uh, signed for this competition on three weeks notice. And look, <laughs> they call this guy the Highland Albert. Dog for a reason. Oh, no, that is Luke Stoltman. Yep, Luke you're Stoltman. Right. His legs oak like Ooh. oaks. Some and very, very impressive performances today. This is this is the smart of Rob Kearney again. One of the shorter men in this competition knew he had to get the implement high to get it onto the platform. 120 kilo Atlas stone on his shoulder. Then I think that is Luke Stoltman. Tell by those big thick legs of his hoisting up 140 kilo shield. You've just been given the overall results now going into the fifth event today so we start in fifth place nope. we've got tie tie for fifth place at the moment with Ramin Fajanad and Luke Stoltman both on 40 points then in third place we have Ivers Schmuckstellis with 43 points second place is the Canadian JF Karan on 45 points and then way out in the lead on 54 points is the incredible Alexei Novikov. I have to say, it's not impossible. It's still mathematically possible that he won't win, but I cannot see anyone catching up with Alexei now. But the battle for second place is going to be very, very interesting. <clears throat> JF Caron will want to maintain that second place position, but Luke Stockman's a great stone lifter. Ivers has put in a, an incredible all-round performance today. You know, we haven't spoken about him too much, but he's just been steady. And I said that at the start of the show. If you are consistent on each and every event, you end up scoring big, big points. I mean, Alexei Novikov, 2020 really was his breakout year. But in 2019, here at World Ultimate Strongman, he came joint fifth. You know he came here looking, to, looking for a better result than that. And, well, if he can perform, as we know he can, in this final event, the run of 10 Atlas Stones, well, this title is his, but he cannot make a mistake. He must be fully focused going into this final event. And we know, we know Tom Stockman didn't have the greatest first few events here on Strength Island. Came back there with the, uh, the carry and load medley. He is king of the stones. Holds the Atlas Stone world record. Can he demonstrate that ability? in our next event. So Andy, who do you think is going to end up on that podium? Well, look, you've got to look at Alexi. Alexi Novikov, it's his to lose. And I think, I haven't done the maths, but I think even with an awful performance here, he would end up on that podium in some capacity. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I can't see anyone catching him for first place. He has put in such a consistent performance today. He's won two out of the four events so far. He's been top three on every single event just an incredible strong man right now so so good across the board and we say how important it is to be consistently impressive you don't have to be the best at anything but if you're solidly performing in those top few placings on every event you make yourself very very hard to beat Luke Stoltman has put in a very impressive performance after the deadlift the deadlift cost him a lot of points but since then he's been flying up that ranking the overall scores are getting closer and closer. He has a chance of getting into that second spot. JF Caron lost a lot of points on that last event. He was in a nice, solid second place. He's still in second, but the gap has closed, and it's going to become a very, very exciting finish to find out who makes the podium. We are getting set for, well, one of the most iconic events in Strongman, the Atlas Stones. And we're here at World's Ultimate Strongman. We do 10 of them, ranging from 100 kilos through to 200 kilos. And here we go with the first of our Atlas Stone runs. Mikhail Shivlikov off to a quick start. Shivlikov hasn't had his best day today, but he'll always keep smiling and keep trying. That's our third stone, 130 kilos. Yeah, so very quickly it goes 100, 120, and then from there it's just up 10 kilos each stone to the massive, and you, you had a look at it yesterday, you can see the diameter of that 200 kilo stone, it's a huge, huge piece of rock. Just being able to negotiate that up onto the legs is, is an incredible feat, and the guys are allowed tacky. And I'll tell you something, one. 10 stones is 
<laughs> that's brutal. You know, five stones is the standard. To go through ten of them, absolutely brutal this way is, to finish a contest. This is not world's ultimate strongman uh, for <laughs> no reason here, Lars. Indeed. And Chilipakov really... It's been a long, well, not a long day. It's been a compact day. Three hours, five events. These athletes have really been tested throughout as Shivlikov, the 40-year-old. You know, it's something I can tell you from experience, Andy. When, when it comes down to the Atlas Stones, it's all about where you're positioned overall, especially when it's the last event. The guys that are fighting for those higher placings, they're going to give it everything. The guys now like Shivlikov, who knows he hasn't had his best day, He'll want to live to fight another day. So he'll just do enough to, to put in a performance. But believe me, Shiv is a much better stone lifter than this when he's in top form. It, it is so interesting how you see someone raise their level on Atlas Stones when they're fighting for those top places. Well, look, Shivlikov finished eighth here in 2019. We'll see how he compares to that. But a valiant effort there. Again, this is... I think he did six stones, was that? We'll get the official result there. And again... There will be count back on times for those who match the stones lifted. Again, that's our only individual competitor here on the Atlas Stones. Every next heat will be head to head. And remember, we have the world record holder for this event in Tom Stoltman coming up. I'm looking forward to seeing how, what kind of shape Tom's in on the stones. Here's Janash, uh, first competition back in two years. Unfortunately, clearly not in his best shape yet, but hopefully being able to compete again, it will build that confidence. You can see there he's sticking. Right, what he's doing there is using tacky. It's like a pine resin. Sticks to the forearms. He's used the, um, the duct tape around the hands to, to protect his skin, and then he sticks the glue to the... It, it acts a bit like a glue. He's got a, a well-known friend with him down there. You were, comparing, you were comparing hands the other day, Lars, yeah. and your hands aren't small by oh, any means. Levan Sagnashvili there, the, arguably the best arm wrestler in the world. There's um, a certain Michael Todd from, from the USA that maybe could argue that, that point. But right now, the world would love to see those guys going head-to-head. -head. But today, it's all about strongman. He's here helping his friend from Georgia, Konstantin Janasha, one of the strongest men on the planet. I wouldn't mind seeing Levin have a go at Strongman as well. I mean, look at the shoulders and he biceps and triceps on him. Look at the, he sees and the hands, forearms the, and, and the, the, yeah, the, the grip wrist. strength would be unworldly, to, to say the least. So this is our first head-to-head -head here in the Atlas Stones. Just for reference, Tom Stockman holds the record 40.7 seconds. So Adam Bishop from the United Kingdom against Konstantin Janasha from Georgia. Here we go. Bish quick to the start. Methodical with the movement, Janasha. Just one motioning the first few stones. Bish doing yeah, well here. Himself. Look how easily he just launches that up. Onto the fourth stone. 140 kilos. Easy, does it? Bish is in great form here. Bish's stone lifting has got better and better of these. Look at that, still one motioning the stones. Normally what happens as they get heavier, they start to lift the stone up to their lap so they can readjust their hands, use that leg power to help a little more as well. Bish still just going on, squeezing the stone. There we go. First time we've had to see him lap it. Readjusts the hands, rolls it up his body, up nicely. Janasha not far behind. And now every stone after this is, is going to add points. You know, doing eight stones, that's impressive. Big Z and Terry Holland are watching on with eagle eyes. Two men who uh, would love to see competing. But today they're enforcing the rules and regulations as... Bish just once again tackies himself up. Yeah, what happens is they go through the stones. They start, the, the, the tacky picks up dust. It's left on the stones. And by the last stone, sometimes you've got no tacky left. So they sometimes put a little bit on the back of their hands just so they can retack. 190 Gr kilos. But Adam Bishop stone. goes up onto the final stone. 200 kilos. And this would be a fantastic finish for Bish. He's not had the best day in the office today. I'm sure he would have wanted to do better, but to finish on lifting all 10 stones would be a really positive end to the day for him. So just so you know, 440 pounds this stone. That is huge. And Bish has it up into the squat. Look at the diameter. He's having to really stretch around that stone. You can see how big it is. It's slipping oh. around. Just not quite enough today. The tacky slipping, but a very, very solid performance. Yeah. Nine stones 
is very impressive. Eight stones for Janasha. We'll see where that leaves him. But Adam Bishop, you know he would have wanted to get those ten stones, but he looked very comfortable throughout that event. It's a good, solid performance. Not many guys have managed to do all ten. And looking at the athletes that we've got today, there's only a, a few on this that I would say could possibly finish. I think Luke Stoltman has a good chance. JF Caron has a good chance. Obviously, Tom Stoltman. Just for a bit of context on this, uh, some were debating if this event could be done in under a minute. Brian Shaw set the world record in 2019 of one minute, two seconds, 0.21. Only for moments later for Tom Stoltman to follow him and obliterate that record in the, what I told you earlier, 40.7 seconds. That really is an indication of, of just how good Stoltman is at this Ridiculous. event. Ridiculous. I've been unfortunate enough to be against Tom Stoltman on a head-to-head. -head that is an Adderstone. unfortunate position to and be in. And it can make you look very, very bad. You can be a decent stone lifter and end up looking very, very poor. So you never want to be going head-to-head -head with Tom Stoltman. Well, we've got Ranjo Heinle in this uh, next heat, and we know he's had problems with his hand leading into this contest. May well have aggravated those in the flag pull earlier. How much does, does the hand come into play in this? It won't affect him as much as the, the flag hoist. Um, but Rauno knows he's not fighting for a podium position. I think he'll just kind of, he'll put a steady performance in here. Going up against the charismatic Rob Kearney. The hand shouldn't be affected as much because he's got the tacky on. He'll stick to the forearms. Well, Kearney's looking smooth here again. Not one of the tallest athletes here. And it's Kearney, a high platform, but he's bouncing it on. Kearney just recently hit a PR in training on the Atlas Stones. So he's feeling confident on them. Oh, yeah. Again, one of the shorter athletes. Those platforms are much harder for him to lift to than, say, a Tom Stoltman. Oh, now Ranio just in the lead here. Rob methodical. Rauno moving really well through the first six. And again, moving on to seventh nicely. This is a good, solid performance. He wanted to finish strong. To prove me wrong, he's going to go and smash all ten stones. Such an iconic event here. To finish off Strength Island here in Bahrain has ran. Oh, neck and neck, but Curdy's one stone down here. And let me assure any budding strongmen that, you know, have trained on stones. Lifting a 200 kilo stone once is impressive. Lifting it after doing nine repetitions before that, up to 190, you're absolutely drained. Again, those who've got a 200 kilo deadlift, let me assure you, it's lifting a 200 kilo Atlas stone is nothing like that. Times it by two, maybe 2.5 in terms of the kind of strength you need to generate to get that awkward, awkward apparatus up. Oh, 100%. You can see they're absolutely fatigued now. It's been a very, very fast-paced contest. These guys are used to maybe a six-hour show. To get everything done in three hours, there's no time to recover. And this is why Strongman is so intriguing. It's not just about, hey, how strong are you? There's so much strength, power, conditioning, tactics, smart. It's... Well, as we put an end to this... You uh, really need to be a complete all-round athlete. And that is why Strongman is such a popular sport they around are the world. supermen. Und undeniably. Rob Kearney, maybe not as far down the line. You can see the nasty scar to. there on his elbow. Yeah. That is a nasty scar. Again, Rob came to this competition just on three weeks' notice. He was in decent shape, he was saying, but again, three weeks' notice and a long, long trip to get here. And do you know something, Andy? Being in decent shape in the gym is one thing. We can all look good in the gym, well, myself included. I can still do impressive things in the gym. When you get to competition, then you find out who's in shape. I've been following your YouTube channel, Lars. Have you seen you do some very impressive things in the gym recently? And talking about impressive, here's the world record holder in this event. Six for eight, 180 kilos of the albatross. Tom Stoltman, his world record is just over 40 seconds. What? And you know Tom what I love about Tom? Out? He doesn't even wear the sleeves. He's got nine to beat in one minute, 19 seconds. That's the target. We know he's capable of faster than that. Ethel will want to put in a solid performance. Yeah, he impressed that last event. Look, look how Tom. quickly he's going. Tom. Even one motion through as many as he can. Using that power belly to his advantage, just hoist <laughs> them on. And Tom Stormman is racking through these. We haven't got a clock, but we'll be watching it. Can you believe how easy he makes? I can assure you these are exceptionally hard stones. They are granite, heavy, heavy stones. Tom treats them like beach balls. And Tom is just moving through them through a knife through. But that's the first time we've seen him work. He's got two stones left. 
He's well ahead of Ethel here. Only Adam Bishop has managed nine so far. He's well ahead of Adam's time. One stone to go. Just a bit of retacking there from Tommy. Looks at this 10 stone. What will be the time? Oh, he's the first time we've seen a chink in the armor there. I Just think he's going to stand up. He's got plenty of time. He's going to want to finish this set. You know he is. We've seen he's got it. We've got it in him. 200 kilos. The 10th and final there stone. There we go. He's got it now. Tom up the lap. Stortman. It's up. And there you go. It's All 10 stones. On. Tom Stortman. A great way to finish his day here at Strength Island. We'll wait for the time. But just completing the 10 stones is a huge, huge achievement here for these strong men. Well, like I said before, only a, a small handful of people have ever completed that set. He is the record holder. He's done the whole lot in sub 45 seconds, which is just ridiculous. He wasn't as quick as that today. I said to you at the start, when it comes to the stones, you, ma you manage to find that extra gear when you're competing for the podium oh, and the title. Ethor Ingolf, son, is that nine stones? We want to double check Don't him. I think he got nine there. We'll check on the, the official results, but he has been very surprising in his final two events. As you said, Los, some Oh, he did get nine. Well, well done. Some had right. questioned whether he, he belonged to be on this competition. Proven. I really think he's to get nine stones up and to show his intelligence in the carry and load. Ethor Ingolf, son, really announcing himself here at World Ultimate Strongman. As soon as we have the official results, we will let you guys know. We know that Tom is into the lead. He's the only man that's done all 10. But Ethor with a very good performance. Only Adam and Ethor have managed the nine. Tom Stoltman, really the man to beat in this. We'll wait for Alexei Novokov to lay his cards on the table as Irving Toots now looks one, to get set. One thing I will say is, as a com you know, having that competition experience, the more people go, the actually easier the stones get sometimes because there's a little bit of tacky left on the stones and that can help. Occasionally in very, very hot climates, that can make it worse because they become slippy. But the temperature today, like I said, is okay. It's starting to cool down here as well. The local time is quarter to five in the afternoon. We've gone past the peak today. There's a wind picking up here. And I'm sure these competitors after a non-stop back-to-back competition will welcome a little cool breeze as they enter this final and iconic event here at World Ultimate Strongman Strength Island. Andy Shepard here and Big Loz, Lawrence Charlotte having the pleasure of calling this action and it's been action all day long. Been non-stop, it really has. The, the Iranian guys have really impressed me. Really, really strong athletes that they've sent over. Irvin Toots, I first saw him compete last year. He's been very, very impressive. Great all-round athlete. He's g all these athletes want to finish strong today now. Particularly now, these guys, we're looking at the top half of the contest. There's prize money to fight for, positionings. And we've got the uh, official results are being slid our way. And as well, Ethor, 9 in 1 minute 41 seconds. And Tom Stoltman, you could see when he walked away, he was disappointed. There was, you know, he was sort of satisfied, I, I guess. One minute and seven seconds. Well, let's remember, it was 2019. People were hypothesizing if this could be done in under a minute. The world record that Tom broke was, was one minute and two seconds. So one minute and seven seconds, it's no slouch. Let's be completely honest about that. I still think, it, what's that, the third fastest time ever to do the, the 10 stones? Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll give him a break. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, you know, t Tom uh, hopefully will be happy with that. He's not had the day he would have wanted to have. Hopefully that can be a, a th cherry on the top Honestly, of Honestly, I think he's going to be disappointed. He's a very competitive man. He wants to be winning these major competitions now. But he's still a very young man. He's still getting better all the time. And I'd expect him to come back and smash it next time. As we go into our next heat here, Irvin Toots. Irvin Toots and Ramin Fajin out there. And Ramin is another one that's just one motioning all these stones. Been very impressed by the Iranians. M oh, Mohammed Estepour, sorry. Been very, very impressive. Look at the size of his shoulders and his arms. See some strapping there, I think. Or is that a, a compression top he's got on? Not a lot of tacky, it doesn't seem like. No, these Iranians going bare sleeved as well. A lot of the guys wear the sleeves to protect the forearms. You saw with, with Tom. And with the Iranian here, going the macho way, getting the scars <laughs> on the forearms. That's the way I would do it, Lars. That's the way I would do it. So Mohammed Estepour here, finally slowing down. 
And Irvin Toots just steadily going through the stones. And you can see the tacky just coming off there on the stones. As you said, Lars, the longer this competition goes on, the more tacky, the more grip these competitors will have. Nine. Yeah, it just leaves a little bit more on each stone, so the guys that go towards the end do have that slight advantage. We're looking for the ninth stone here from the Iranian. If he really wants to challenge for the podium, he's going to need to get these last two stones. 190 kilos. And it's a bit of a tortoise and the hare moment here. Irving could sneak ahead if he can get this stone. He's taking his time. He hasn't rushed through any. Yeah, Toots just composing himself here. He knows nine stones will be good points. Mohamed Estepal, they're trying to get it onto his lap. He does manage to do that. Now he readjusts the hands. Good. Oh. Spoke too soon. Uh, they, you get so fatigued, honestly. You don't have time to recover. You need half an hour to recover. And this is, remember, this is, Dave, this is their fifth event in three hours. These competitors have been tested so much. as Irvin, Irvin has been behind the whole way on this head-to-head. -head. Can he get it high enough? It needs to go up a few more inches. Oh. Not quite. It was a great effort, but he just couldn't quite get over the lip. Utterly disappointment. So close to that ninth stone for Irvin at Toots, but... Some great performances here. And Loz, you, you were telling me when Strongman was first in his infancy, the Alistos went up to 150 kilos. 140. Yeah, honestly, the, the weights are just getting heavier and heavier. And we were talking about five stones then. Now, they're starting at 100, going all the way up to 200. I have seen some contests heavier than 200, but never with 10 stones. <laughs> Indeed, Tom Stockman also holds the Alistos world record. 286 kilograms set on... World Ultimate Strongman feat of strength in May 2020. We talk that about really Stockman. was incredible. We talk about Stockman. Here comes Luke Stockman, and another two men coming out. Bobby and Luke both going no sleeves. <laughs> look at the size of Luke Stockman's legs. Just such power generated from those. And Bobby Thompson, who's really had a a great day, great start to his day, particularly in that deadlift. Bobby's been unbelievable today, and he's going to want to finish strong as as, as all these guys are. You know, one small blip is all it's been. He needs to erase that loading now and focus on getting through these stones. He knows nine stones is going to be big points. That'll be the focus in his head first. Well, well there we go. And I, I, think, I think Luke is another man that can finish this. Look how quick Luke Stortman is. It obviously runs in the family. They're both incredible stone lifters. And because Tom is so good... Sometimes Luke doesn't get the credit he deserves. He's an incredible stone lifter. More than capable of finishing this. Great representation of Scottish strong man. Indeed, Luke said he wants to have the Stoltman name represent strong man in Scotland to inspire next generation. And well, this performance, look how quick he's going. He's already onto the ninth stone. Is wow. That, well, there's that, sorry, the eighth stone. Getting an interesting bird's eye view there. He's got three more stones to do. He's not rushing. He's just wanting to make sure with everyone. And there's Bobby onto the lap. Gets his arms over. Nicely oh. done. But Bobby not rushing, taking his time. Yeah, fatigue is a real, real factor at this point in the day. As Luke gets that eighth stone up onto 190 kilos in the Atlas stone. As Bobby's creeping back into this. Luke needs to stay ahead. He's still one stone ahead right now, but Bobby is slowly catching up. It's a two-minute two lim two time limit, which is quite a long time for stones, but with the 10 stones, you need it. Oh. Ooh. I think the day and the pace of the show may have, maybe have caught up with these guys. Like we said earlier, it was a very fast-paced show. Oh, he's got it. He's got that ninth. He'll and be happy with that. Luke Stobber moves on to the tenth and final stone. Two Lucas as Bobby calls it a day at eight. And Can Luke finish them off? I think there's not enough time now. He knows it. He's breathing heavy. Well, nine stones it is for Luke Stobber. Smile on his face. It's been a tough day for these guys. They are exhausted. I can tell you I've seen Luke lift that stone before. It shows how the pace of this show, the events that we've had previously, the biceps will have really felt it on that arm over arm pull. You know, different events end up affecting the body differently and it can have that knock-on effect as, as the events. Well, the organizers here at World's Ultimate Strongman really want to put these uh, 
incredible athletes to the test and that's what they've done today in these five events over three hours thank you so much for joining us i hope you're enjoying this fantastic display of athleticism and strength it's our final event here on strength island Wow, Luke, Tolman, Luke Stoltman's time has just come in at 1.41 dead. Ethor's time was 141.17, oh. both for nine stones. He sneaked into third place there. Bishop is still in second with Tom Stoltman leading the pack, doing all 10 in one minute, zero seven And again, seconds. we want to we do our fact check here, but to our knowledge, that's the third fastest time this event has ever been done in. Which is disappointing for Tom as he is the record holder. <laughs> <laughs> Ramin Farjanad. But I think, you know, the slower times we're seeing because of the pace of the show, the events that we've seen already, it really does affect performances. It shows that, again, this is not about just strength. You have to be an all-round athlete. You've got to be conditioned. So, Ivo's coming and looking at all his stones. He wants to make sure they're all in position. And Ramin Farjanad. The other this. Iranian. And these guys are fighting for podium positions. This is going to be a battle. Yeah, still to come. Alexei Novikov, last year's strongest man in the world and a real standout here. What will he bring to the Atlas Stones? I'll tell you something. Okay. The fact that Ramin is battling for the podium is an incredible story. Ramin Farjanad was shot. He was in hospital bed for, for a very long time. And now he is back, battling for a podium position. Well, and look at this. World ultimate strongman. And Ivers is flying. Look at this. I mean, just using that, that abdomen to, to, to Look at the shot. height that he's getting on each stone. He's way above the platforms. Getting through as many as he can as quickly as possible. Remember, time, well, if it's a count back here, time will count per Atlas Stone. And he's really making his mark here in the early stages of his 10 Atlas Stone run. He is flying. And I think, I don't know if it's the confidence through the midsection that's slowing Ramin down there. I was expecting him to really battle with this event being a decider for the podium, basically. We're on he's to struggling. our ninth stone here. And what a performance here by Ivers. Ivars looks for the 200 kilo, 10th Atlas stone. He has come into this contest in show. Oh! Ooh. He wants to keep that stone. If he gets this 10th stone up, it really will be a, a great achievement, great placing, but that stone is rolling. He needs to get it back into is position. Is he going to try again? He's got plenty of time. No. Nope. Uh, calls it a I day. I think he's done. I mean, that was a quick... It was a fast time for, for, for nine. He may be enough to get that second place. Remember, still to come, though. Yes, Alexei Novakov. The two leaders, Novikov and J.F. Karana. J.F. is another man that has finished this run of stones before. Can Ramin get one more? It's been a valiant effort from him today. Really impressive athlete. And he's got it. And he didn't make it look that hard. You know, he felt like maybe he could have pushed a bit harder on the earlier stones. We, we said earlier, this is a man I do not want to play poke with. He doesn't let you in <laughs> what he's feeling with his, uh, his facial. I think, honestly, he's feeling some pain from the whole day now. Uh, five seconds, there's not enough time for this stone. But a good, solid finish for him. I've been very impressed with Ramin's performance. Oh, I think he's hurt his bicep. He's yeah. pointing to it there. Oh, he never Hopefully, it's not a tear, maybe yeah. just a pull. When he lifted. Ivers is happy with his... I think that means he's got second place. When an athlete reacts like that. Yeah. We'll wait for the official time, but he is certainly very happy with that event. And when we talk about Alexei Novikov and JF Kron, here they come. The final heat of the 10 run at La Stones here at World Ultimate Strongman Strength Island. What a day it's been, Loz. What a competition it's been. Do you think we can see one or two more athletes finish this incredibly brutal set of stones? Well, if anyone can do it in this field, it's certainly these two. So Ivers hitting nine stones in 49.68 seconds.
That. And I believe that is second place. That is certainly impressive. And that's, been, that's even going to test these competitors here. Yeah, he was pushing Tom's pace there. If he could have got that, that final stone. Very, very impressive. Ivers is coming in the best shape I've ever seen him. Very, very impressive. We talk about impressive. That's what Alexei Novikov has been consistent throughout this day here on Strength Island. What will he bring here? He's inspecting his stone. He doesn't want to leave any, any stone unturned, as is JF Koron. Yeah, look at that. He's going to the last stone. What he's doing there is just put, touching the stone so he leaves a little tacky on it, exactly where he's going to plan on putting his hands. All within the rules. And this is the smarts yeah. we talked about. Yeah. You know, he's, he, 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 you can, the fact that he's doing this, I can guarantee you he wants to do all ten. He's not thinking about just doing a fast nine. He wants to lift all the stones. Well, one minute and seven seconds is the time to beat Tom Stoltman. And you've got to think, Alexei Novikov is a competitor who wants to show that he is the best time and time again. That time will be in yeah, his he mind. He will want to beat one minute and seven seconds. I think Alexei, as long as he does eight stones, will win the contest. But the way he's going and approaching that last one, he wants to prove he's the absolute best he, athlete here. He wants he, to dominate the contest. He wants to win every single event. What we just saw him inspecting that 10th stone is a real indication he will not rest on his laurels. He will not rest on the lead he has built up here today. He wants to complete all 10 stones and stand atop of that podium. And I'll tell you as what, a true JF is going to have to work man. to maintain that second position because that was a fantastic time by Ivers. We know that Alexi will go off quick. Will JF, JF try and follow him or stick to his own pace? JF's a very experienced athlete. He'll focus on his own performance. He won't be distracted by what anyone else is doing. Look how quick Alexi picks up those first two stones. 130 kilos goes up. He just seems to get better and better and better. Here we go. Halfway through. Five stones up to 160 kilos. One sure. fluid movement per stone. Alexa isn't one motioning the early stones as much as some of maybe the other athletes were, but he's being effective, making sure of each stone. This is quick. JF not too far behind, but Alexa still moving well. He hasn't struggled on any stone yet. Pacing himself now. He got through the first few early. Now he can focus on the big stones. And again, it goes up comfortably. And Alexei Novikov showing why he is truly one of the best in the world He's as he approaches. ready on the, the 200 kilo stone. The 10th stone. 440 pounds after lifting nine stones before that. And both men now ready for the 10th. And Novikov goes for it. 200 kilos. It's up to the lap. He looks strong. And look at that. And he's done it. What an athlete. We will wait for the time, but that was another stand-out performance for Alexei Novikov. Can as JF finish this as well to secure second place? He does it. Wow. JF, such an incredible athlete, but today is all about one man. I really expected more of a challenge from some of the other guys, but Alexei Novikov has been superb from start to finish. A competitor at 24 years of age is only getting better and better. He's still learning the sport you are at 24 years old and he's showing the intelligence as well as his physical prowess is coming this way. And I tell you what, what a day it's been here. Don't go anywhere though, as we have more here on Strength Island. Hello, cheat day. Goodbye, Gil. What's up? Count them. Two new flavors from Rain Total Body Fuel. Cherry Limeade. Wild Cherry with a hint of... Hello, cheat day. Goodbye, Gil. What's up? Count them. Two new flavors from Rain Total Body Fuel. Cherry Limeade. Wild Cherry with a hint of lime. And White Gummy Bear. Tangy Tart Pineapple Goodness. Feel that? 300 milligrams of natural caffeine, electrolytes, BCAAs, plus CoQ10. We like that. Sugar, zero. Next, step up your game. That's how you beat cheat day. New Rain Cherry Limeade and White Gummy Bear. A total body fuel times two. There is a stronghold. It will be heavily guarded. Of course it is. It's the most valuable thing in the world. We will send a dozen Viking ships through the landing. Raid, pillage, until we make it there. No survivors! Yeah. Yeah. We are in the hands of Ogun! Yeah. So 
are you guys doing all of this just for some beard oil? Yeah. 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 Founded in 1977, our quality supplements earned us a strong reputation built on trust and honesty. Building on our heritage, we continually push ourselves to formulate and manufacture the best sports nutrition supplements with billions of packs sold. We're on this journey together, stronger, faster, better. One rep at a time, one set at a time, one pack at a time. I am Animal. I might be quite brief with them, I would, and then, like, if it's just a lecture call, if not, do a, a question each, but then, whatever time we've got, let's you and me just wrap it up and be like, no problem. Welcome back guys. It's been an incredible day here on Strength Island. The athletes are absolutely exhausted. Just finished five brutal events and now the totals are being counted. Five. We know the winner, <laughs> but... Let's be going to wait for it to be official. It lads. needs to be official. I don't Shep think there's any question about who won today. No, it's Andy Shepard here and Big Loslo and Charlotte had a pleasure of calling the action all day long here on Strength Island. And we see there Tom Stockman really redeemed himself here on the Atlas Stone. We, we, we knew he would. We knew he would. And we know that today is not a true representation of what the, the big, powerful, young Stockman brother is all about. He hasn't been his best today, but he finished strong. Atlas Stones is, is without question his best event. And he proved it again. I, I, it's been a few years now since he's been beaten on Stones. And he's competed, you know, he's performed on them so impressively well. Still winning the stones as well today. Didn't break his record, but 
none of the athletes were at their absolute best on this. They are exhausted from the pace of this show, from the events that have been selected. Their bodies are battered and bruised. It's a good, solid finish to the show. Obviously, he did not start the way he wanted, but it's always good to finish strong. That builds the confidence. He'll go home, address what went wrong, and I promise you, Big Tom will be back stronger than ever in the next show. JF Karan, unbelievable, good, consistent performance again today. The Iranians, they've been fantastic. Who's really been the standout for you? You have to go with Novikov. I mean, we talked about this throughout the broadcast, Lost. This strongman is not about who is simply the strongest. It's strength, it's power, it's conditioning. And, and that's what Alexei Novikov has shown, along with some incredible smarts. He's shown just in the, we saw in the, 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 the carry and load, he was seeing how others were doing it, where they were failing. And he adjusted, he got the shield high, he got it up there. He is a very, very intelligent individual when it comes to strongman events. And that's what it's all about. You describe this as the decathlon of strength. It's not about being the best at one thing. It's about being great at so many different skills. Yeah, you need to be totally complete as an athlete. Alexei Novikov is proving that because we're seeing that consistent performance again and again and again. And that's when you establish yourself as one of the greats in the sport. Irvin Toots there now on screen, you can see him. It just shows you how tough these events are. I mean, that's 180 kilos, 190 kilo stone there he was attempting. We see here Luke Stockman, he had a great day, as did the American. Bobby Thompson really started today off in fantastic fashion. The deadlift, he came from nowhere. This is a man who in 2019 won the Arnold amateur and now he's here really showing he can hang with the very best at world ultimate strongman uh, Bobby Thompson's been very impressive today he always said the static events are more his thing but I, I've been super impressed with Bobby you can see how strong he is looking forward to seeing more of him in the future but this is the beautiful thing about this sport. We're watching these athletes evolve. There's so many skills involved. Uh, hey, Bobby may have said, I'm great at static lifts, but you can see the work he's been putting in to become a more well-rounded this, competitor. This, that's a very good point to, you know, to focus on. There's a lot of athletes now focusing on one lift. But the guys, I mean, look at Ivers today. Doesn't really stand out on anything in particular. But the man has put in a blistering all-round performance. A great all-round strongman. And, you know, I'm not sure on his final positioning yet, but he's up there. This has been a real great competition for, for competitors come here who may have been underestimated. When you look at the list, there's so many standout names here at World's Ultimate Strongman. The, uh, the organizers have really pulled the cream of the crop together. But some of these athletes who were maybe underestimated have shown that they can hang. Uh, every one of these 15 athletes has really been impressive. You know, there's no one here that isn't worthy of, of a position. That's an impressive fall we saw there, but he got up and he recovered and talk about impressive. How about these two? Novikov has really improved on every event as well. Stones were never his best event at one stage. He has just improved and improved and improved. Well, we I mean, are waiting the official results and we'll get those to you as quickly as we can, but I tell you what, it's been a, a real breakneck pace of competition here. Five events in three hours. Well, look, we thank you wherever you're watching around the world for joining us here on this top level, world-class standout display of strength, athleticism, and conditioning. And I have just been past the official results. I can't say just yet. But we will bring them to you very, very soon. Well, wait, we but need I will pass say them. there is when some they, very, they... very close calls on some of these. Very, very close between some of the athletes. Well, we'll get those official results on the screen for you as soon as we can. Alexei Novikov came in here with a point to prove. He wanted to prove that 2020 wasn't a fluke. That it wasn't just, hey, I was making the best of a, a rough year of competition. He wanted to come here and show why he was 2020. Well, people, people have said he was lucky to win some of the titles last year because certain athletes were injured. There is no luck with this man. He is without question one of the best strength athletes, not just on the planet right now, but ever.
That and is I a think, big, big statement. I think at the age of 25, he is now, he has a huge future. As long as he looks after his body, that man could go on to be one of the best of all time. We will continue to follow his journey here in World Ultimate Strongman. And it's competitions like this that really get to highlight how good these competitors are. You know, I wish that you know anyone watching at home who, uh, who, who goes to the gym, who lifts weight, I, I would love for you to have the opportunity to come here and just try some of the apparatus that these guys lift. I had that pleasure yesterday when we came to do a site visit. And I can tell you what, things like the Atlas Stones, they are so deceptively hard to lift almost ignore the number of the weight 100 kilos 150 kilos i'm sure a lot of you watching this can move those kind of weights but it's the apparatus it's the strain it puts your body under do you know the great thing now as well there's a lot more gyms that you can get strongman equipment that's accessible that's all plate loaded so you can start by stripping the weights right down i train a number of like female middle-aged women that just want to get fitter but they love doing the strongman events obviously at a much lower weight scale but you can do like the farmer's walks with 20 or 40 kilos a hand you can get like you know 50 pound atlas stone balls and just make it fun for them make it interesting and obviously these guys they scale it up to the ridiculous weights that we see here but it's such a fun dynamic way to train and it's exciting we're seeing more and more strength events being used for rugby players american football players fighters you know it's it's such a fun way to train it, it's it works every facet of your physicality i mean there's for these guys to compete there can be no weak link in their physical armor and indeed in their mental armor it takes a lot to to be mentally revved up to do these to lift these kind of weights loss five events three hours that in itself is a I, test no, i mean Obviously, I've got the experience, and I know how beat up their bodies would be feeling going into those Atlas Stones. It's, it's a horrible feeling because your lower back is pumped up. Your, your, your arms are absolutely exhausted from some of the previous events. The hands are extremely sore. You know, you, you, you may find they're a bit dehydrated and start cramping up, and they've still got to try and battle it out to the very end. I was impressed with Rauno's finish on the Stones then. I said I wasn't, you know... With the way his competition had gone, I didn't expect him to really give it everything, but he finished strong. Yeah, he battling through. And there you go, Tom Stockman, making them look like beach balls. Tom Stockman, <laughs> again, Tom Stockman is just, he looks big here on your screens, but I can tell you what, in person, he is just another level. He's a monster, isn't he? 180 kilos, six for eight, could be six. Very, very impressive performance. What a day. What an event. This is Strength Island in Stilter Cup. We're going to announce the official result. Who has done enough? Who will be on that podium? Who will be crowned king of Strength Island? The world... I am already excited for the next one. We've still got some incredible athletes to return from injury, but I think we've got some exciting shows to look forward to with the potential return of Kieliuszkowski, the Polish absolute dynamite sensation. Martin Zalisis, one of the absolute best in the world. Both those two guys unfortunately missing this show due to injury, but Novikov is without question the man of the moment. That's fine. Yeah. Well, we are waiting. The official results. We've been given what we think are some results, but until, of course, they are made official, we will wait to announce them. We don't want to give you guys false hope, but there's been some incredible performances here. There's some very close numbers at the top 
of the table. Every point certainly counted in this competition. It certainly did. And Loz, I've got to ask you, who impressed you the most today? Well, obviously, Novikov has been the most impressive athlete, but he was one of the favourites. So, for me, I must say I've been impressed with Bobby Thompson. Both of the Iranians, Ramin Farjanad and Mohamed Estepour, really have impressed me. And the real, I think, just for sheer consistency, Ivor Schmuckstellis. That guy is very, very overlooked. No one ever talks about him contending at major shows. He's always there and thereabouts. You see him in the contest, but he has really performed well today. He's been very, very strong. No weak events. I think he's very pleased with how he's done. I think some of the guys coming back from injuries, Rob Kearney, Constantine Janasha, we've seen better performances from them, but that will improve. The confidence of being back under the lights of, and under the pressure of competition, very, very different to training in the gym. So I think they'll take positives from today. They'll go away. They'll come back even better next time. But I have to say, Novikov has just blown my mind today. He's been so impressive. I expected a good performance from him, but he's even, you know, ex he's exceeded what I, what I was expecting. There's a lot of expectations on Alexei Novikov, of course, after his standout 2020, but at just 24 years of age, he hasn't let the, the pressure or the expectation get to him. He's come here today and he has performed again. We are waiting the confirmation of official results. But let's be honest, we know that Alexei Novikov has had a fantastic day here in Bahrain. Without question. He's going to be going home a very pleased man. And remember, this is the start of the 2021 year for all these competitors on the international scene. Plenty more to come this year from World Ultimate Strongman. And I cannot wait to see. We've got some big events planned. The situation across the world seems to be improving. We would love to welcome back fans to these events as soon as possible. You've got to think a crowd, the roar of the crowd would help spur these competitors onto some phenomenal, phenomenal. If this is what they can do without crowds. Well, oh I was going to say, I mean, you know, when you're competing in front of a huge crowd, it really does raise your level even more. And the performances we've seen today have been outstanding, but I believe they can be even better when we start packing out these venues. We well, we are about to announce the podium, the official results here on Strength Island. Did you get that? Well, here we go. So we have the official results up now. You can see from the gold medal at the top, Alexei Novikov taking the win. Very quickly, we'll start from the bottom. Mikhail Shivlikov, 18 points. Konstantin Janasha, 26 points, with only one point ahead of him. Rob Kearney. Then we have Irvin Toots, Raunel Heinler, Adam Bishop, Ethor Ingelson, really performing well. People kind of counting him out completely of this competition. A very, very solid performance from the Icelandic. Bobby Thompson, massively impressive today. But look at this. In joint position, we have Mohamed Estepour, Ramin Farjanad, and Luke Stoltman with 43 points each. Unbelievable performance from all three men. Been so impressed with the, the Iranians. But look at this man. Ivers Schmuckstellis. Nobody was talking about him at the start of this show. He comes and gets third place. We're just getting told there's some adjustments to the, that scoreboard there. So there was some slight mistakes there with the scoring. So one thing we do know, we know that Novikov is first place with 68 points. JF Karan was second place with 58 points. Ivor Schmuckstellis, who I was just talking about, getting on the podium with 55 points. And Luke Stoltman was in fourth place 
with 50 points. But we had a joint tie with Ramin Mohammed and Tom Stoltman. That was the, the, the mistake there. All three of those men on 43 points. Tom flying up the rankings on those last two events. Luke, after that bad start, just off the podium there. But wow, what a finish for Novikov, Jeff Karan, and Ivers Schmuckstelis. What a day, what an event. 2021, kicking off in style for World Ultimate Strongman. Some happy, happy competitors here as they begin their year on the international circuit. And it's Alexei Novikov who begins 2021 as he finished 2020. And that is on top. Moments away from our top three competitors being awarded with some very spectacular uh, trophies. What do we call yeah. them? Well, you're seeing just a moment, yeah, but again, World's are. Ultimate Strongman, really being innovative. They always aim to give the most interesting and spectacular trophies for these athletes. I have seen them, and these guys are going to struggle to get them back home. Well, There's <laughs> some excess luggage charges, that's for sure, for these competitors <laughs> traveling home. So here we have Mikhail Shivlikov, 15th position. He, you can just see such a jovial character, always happy, always smiling. That's why we love to see him. Not his best performance today but he will be back, I'm sure of it. Konstantin Janasha then, our next athlete. So good to see him back competing on the international scene. He's an incredible, incredible strong man. The confidence isn't quite there yet. He's not in top shape. Give him a few months, a bit more training, and we'll see better from the big Georgian. Rob Kearney as well, another man coming back from injury. He only took this contest on three weeks notice. Rob smiling as well. A couple of good solid performances. Maybe not as strong as he'd like to be right now, but he's still only five months out from tearing his triceps. Then we have Irvin Toots up next. Finishing in 12th place today. 30 points. Our next athlete, the incredible deadlift start that he had today, Rauno Heinler. Truly an absolute beast when it comes to the deadlift. And another incredible deadlifter there, the British champion, Adam Bishop, taking 10th place. Of Ethor from Iceland, Bobby Thompson. And then we had that unique position of three men tied for fifth place. Ramin Fajinad, Mohamed Estepour, and the giant Tom Stoltman in fifth place there, all joint on 53 points. Luke Stoltman just off the podium this time. Fourth place with 50 points. And now for our top three. That is a mass of man there on the stage. And as we welcome our top three competitors. So in third place on 55 points, Ivers Schmuckstelis. What a day for him. He's going to be so pleased with his performance. Real breakout moment for that competitor. Everyone's still smiling. Well, nearly everyone. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a grimace there. JF Karan, our second place for today. 58 points. Another impressive podium finish for the veteran from Canada. I always love how cool and calm JF is. He never lets anything phase him. Apparently those are about eight kilos as well, so. Makes it look easy. <laughs> he does, he's, he's strong enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at the size of what will be presented to the winner here on Strength Island. And here's the champion, the one and only Alexei Novikov from Ukraine. A dominating performance today. He's smiling, he's happy. He can relax and enjoy his evening. But what a truly worthy champion he is. And Alexei Novikov is crowned king of Strength Island. What a day. What an event.
What a moment here in Bahrain for these 15 strong men. But it's Alexei Novikov who rules here on World's Ultimate Strongman Strength Island. The confetti is blowing. And there's the champ. What a day it's been, Andy. Lars, it's been a pleasure to be here watching this first major competition of 2021. And the line has been drawn in the sand. Alexei Novikov proves that 2020 was no fluke. He has come, he has dominated, and he is king here in Bahrain. Thank you so much for joining us here in Bahrain. For more footage, jump across to Core Sports. There'll be plenty of additional content, behind the scenes footage, and the lowdown on all of these competitors. Wherever you are watching in the world, from myself and Big Loss Lawrence Chalet, thank you for joining us here on Strength Island in Bahrain.